Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. Check one, two, one, two, check, check, two, check, two. Check one, two, one, two, yeah, check, yeah, check, yeah. two, check, two. It fucking worked. It fucking worked. Six months have been trying to get this shit to work and it fucking worked. Oh my god. Oh my god. Start the fucking show. From across all corners of our fair planet Earth, welcome to the Gaming Cult Podcast. Worldwide opinions on obscure and up to date gaming talk culture and be curry for today and yesteryear. You love it, my boy. My boy. No, I mean, there's all these people like around here that sell those enjoy weed California shirts and they're in the fucking uh, same exact font. So I'm pretty sure it's okay. I think we'll be absolutely yeah, but, but, fine. Like, do you think they paid for that? You can't get a drone like, for right anything, deal, Ruby. I don't think Weed California has enough money to pay the Coca-Cola Corporation. I don't think we'll get in Happy trouble. for 20 right? Yeah. At all for using the Coca-Cola logo. I say we go mm-hmm. for it. Also, you live in Australia. Coca Cola's in Atlanta, so you're probably fine. We don't even have Coca Cola yeah. here, exactly. Oh, you what don't? Do you guys have? No, we don't. We have. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Are we void? So, some. Can we so, do heaps of crime? Some funny alternative. Wait, you guys actually don't have the brand Coca Cola, or so yeah, does? You don't know that, Brian? No, we. They've we got. Don't. They've got Jack and Jack's Asparilla. Yeah. Yeah. When you go to Hungry and Jack's, and lemon you lime. Get, you we, get we, a you get a Kanga Cola. We just buy <laughs> we just buy we just buy big bags of syrup from the local like <laughs> from the local <laughs> servo. Um, from the local oh. servo. <laughs> we just get a big bag of syrup from the servo and put it just put it in the in the water tank and we're good to go. You know we've got coat. We got we got we got we got, yeah. we got tasty cola like beverage that for days. Of Simpsons where they drink the squishy um, syrup. Oh, and they, like then they trip on sugar. That's right. Mm-mm-mm. It's it's just like um in like every single student election we've had uh, at like every single primary school and high school I've gone to. There's always the joke like, oh, we'll put Coke in the bubblers. That actually happened last year. There was a law passed in Australia where Coke was put in all primary and high school uh, bubblers. So now is a bubbler. I'm assuming a bubbler is a like a no, soda dispenser. A water fountain. It's a water yeah, fountain. Water fountain so, yeah. Yeah. Like. Like a water cooler, <laughs> water fountain, not like a, um, not like a, uh, like you press a button and water comes out into your mouth, right? Yeah, no, no that. Yeah, exactly oh, that. Oh, what? There, there was, was like, yeah. that? like was a fucking fountain. Now, now drinking there's a fucking every single high school and primary school. There was a rule, Are you fucking kidding me? a rule was passed down from the Senate to replace all water with diuretics, and uh, that's what we got now. Fucking Australia. Okay. Mm. Wait, stop. This is a Delicious. joke, right? You're you're, uh, yeah. you're joking. Hey. You guys are playing also, it like uh, Ryan, Ryan, you um, know what? You know what? Hello and welcome to episode 56 of the Game Cult podcast. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I'm your host Jake Innes from slightly Oh, uh, you know what? It's almost sunny Melbourne, Australia. Uh, joining me, we have Garrett Hunter from San Diego, California. Hello. Hi, I'm here. I just put food in my mouth too. Damn it. Nice. I always time that just right. Ugh, Gary, God. my friend, how are you? Um, good. Having a little Reese's Pieces it's right after Easter, you know. Uh, San Diegans, we like to celebrate Easter outside on the sunny uh, lawns, and we hunt eggs, and we find those eggs, and inside those eggs, oh, there's Reese's Pieces. I hear that that uh, holiday is exclusive to Southern California. Yeah, it's like a... Um, popped collar kind of sandals on the lawn um Mm -hmm. like uh croquet uh you know casual wine in the afternoon uh sparkling kind of cider day that kind of thing very good Uh, happy easter well thank you you. from oregon usa we have uh dr ryan reed ryan my friend how are you mr ryan doctor 
Um, hold on, hold on one second. Mr. I'm buying a copy of Terminator Salvation for PS3 on eBay right now. Oh no! Why? <laughs> Why? Wow. Okay, I've got Why I got not? one for nine dollars. Uh, I need to get the platinum trophy in it because I got the thousand points on Xbox 360. <laughs> so now I need the platinum for my PS4. So I feel uh, complete. Look, as a person. Well, well, while while you're, while you're at it, go back get yourself a pa- get yourself a brand new copy if you can. Go on to amazon.co.uk. I think that's the one that you guys have over there. And mm. go and look up Peter Jackson's King Kong. And you get yourself you know, a copy of that. That's an Oh, 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 oh Jake. Wait a second. Yeah. Let me make Jake look foolish. That yeah. was for Xbox 360 only. I thought it was fucking dual platform. What? Oh wait, no, it was PS2. Fuck. I'm throwing up middle fingers and you can't see it right now. Oh, oh Did you play shit. 360 games on the Xbox One? Well, I don't have an Xbox One. I uh, play there's like a select few. <laughs> like, not every single 360 game is playable on the Xbox One, but some are. That's stupid. Uh, Xbox can go Do fuck Do I still itself. sound like a robot? No, you sound great. Uh, you joining did for a second, that's why I started laughing. You. That's really nice. From, oh, okay. from sunny Sydney, Australia. I'm going to assume it's sunny in Sydney, Australia. Rubianus. Um, hello. Uh, I'm not actually in like central Sydney right now. Um, I'm on like a, a review camp because um, I'm producing uh, the University of Sydney's Queer Review. Um, and... We are currently at a camp in Pittwater, which is, um, I think it's like two hours public transport from Sydney. I went there for my elementary school camp, if it's the place that I'm yeah. thinking of. Like my is year Pit- five or year Water six YHA? camp. Maybe. Yeah, this place is great. Um, I can smoke darts here. And, um... Ooh, fucking darts? Uh, they have new cigarettes? Start to cigarettes, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you can call them darts. Um, I've heard them been called Darren's. <laughs> you can call them uh, dangers. Uh, uh-huh. You can just call them ciggies. You can call them cigs. Um, I've heard death sticks a few times, but like whenever someone calls them a death stick, it's either <laughs> ironic or they're being a cunt. Like, there's no <laughs> in between. They're, those people are really big episode two fans. <laughs> I'm behind the building because like it's the only place I can probably get reception. And I think I found mint, but it's like growing out of the wall. No, really. you should definitely <laughs> taste it. No, it smells yeah. like mint. Really? It's probably safe. I mean, it's growing from the ground, so you're probably fine. No, it's fine. growing from like bricks. Oh, I mean, that's even better. The bricks filter out all the bad stuff. Oh, I guess he is a doctor. That sounds right. Like, yeah, you are a doctor. You should know. I am a, a doctor. Is that official medical advice? 100%. If you see if you see something growing out of a brick, it's probably fine. Oh, no. Altoids, yeah. Altoids <laughs> came out with a brick mint flavor, but it was only in the, like, uh, UK territory. Why, From, well, why don't they have them everywhere else? I don't know. From San Diego, Weird. California, we have Brian Abishakra. Hey guys, how's it going? My, Brian, my friend, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing real good. Really, uh, really happy to be back with you guys. I've been thinking, uh, thinking about you guys, and I missed you. And I decided that I'm happy that we're doing this again. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. Aww. I agree. It's been six months, and my viewers, I say thank you. You're still listening. Five years later, you're still sticking with us. And shouts out and. Um, what's happened in the last six months. I think you have a new president. I might be... I don't know about that, but... Um, you have a new president. Oh, shit. What? Yeah, that what's was six months ago. We didn't. Yep. You didn't have to, you didn't have Donald Trump as your as the president of the United States well, we last time him. I recorded a gaming cult podcast. Yeah. Yeah. We still had him over here. We just called him the Donald back then. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now I we call him Mr. President. Nice. Well, some people do. Hashtag not my president. Hashtag. Literally not my president. Not mine either. I don't live there. <laughs> we don't have a president, actually. You know what? That's no, true. No, you guys have a prime minister. Yeah. Prime minister. His name's Who Andy. is the prime minister? Andy. Andy's prime uh, minister. Prime minister um, Andy Turnbong. Turn, turn, wait, I'm sorry. What, Turnbong? Yeah, he loves weed. Oh, hell yeah. 
Or yeah. 20. He won't le- he won't legalize it because he thinks that everybody will start smoking it and it won't be cool anymore. So he's not legalizing it. <laughs> right. Oh, he's oh, hoarding it, yeah, dude. dude. Yeah. No, Whoa, dude, he's keeping, he's keeping weed cool, dude. If, if everyone yeah. could smoke it, then what's the point? No way, exactly. man. Harsh. He's hoarding it all for himself. At the himself, same time, though, and he, he can keeps just fang getting everyone bones. arrested for ha- having the weed. Yeah, he's taking their weed so he can build, like, all the weed for himself. He's Harsh, man. Like a house made of weed. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, there's a spider out here. Oh, Aren't all no. the Prime Minister's friends? Maybe, like, the Canadian one, Justin, he could tell them a thing or two and they could all kind of agree. Aren't all the Prime Minister's friends? <laughs> Don't you think they would all be... I mean, there's only what? There's only gotta be, like, a dozen or so, and maybe Justin oh Trudeau God. knows Yeah, that guy. Yeah, do you think, do you think they all know each other? There. Canada and Australia are gotta be, like, having trades and stuff. Yeah, dude, they're yeah, all best they're friends. Like, they're part of the best friends club. They all, like, club. hang out. They, they absolutely talk on Skype all the time like we do. I mean, I oh, think... Cool probably on like I'm gonna be honest I'm not too our prime minister has any friends like he doesn't see like like he seems like he'd be a dude you'd have a conversation with but he doesn't seem like someone you'd want to spend like multiple days with at a time I think he's just happy with his money like uh, our our prime minister is like a multi-billionaire as well oh yeah he's kind of like Trump yeah Mm. yeah he's pretty conservative Mm. too Mm. yeah um yeah my friends it's it's 2017 and uh, there's been some video games out uh, recently, and you know what? Uh, I feel like it's weird that we get to video games so quickly. This being the Gaming Cold podcast, but you know what? Sometimes you just got to talk about the games. You got to say, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to talk about this this entertainment platform that I enjoy so much, and it's on several different platforms." that come in forms of hardware, and it's video games, and we're going to talk about them. I played Final Fantasy XV, and I thought it was good. There was a cup noodle quest, it was sponsored content, and, (laughs) you know, there was a lot of emotional exposition uh, around that cup noodle, let's say thank you. I killed a large lobster man and stole his claws to put in my cup noodle, because, of course, cup noodle is the best thing you can eat in Final Fantasy XV. Gladio tells you that, like, six times. (laughs) Yeah, kill that lobster man in front of his kids. Put in your cup noodle. You can steal... There's another quest where you can steal a large bird creature's eggs in front of him. You can steal his unborn children, kill them, and put them in your cup noodle, and then your cup noodle gives you more stamina. Yep. Hell yeah. Tight. Um, I named my Chocobo Baseball. Oh, nice. I named mine up in Ganga's style. <laughs> what that, I game got was, to, uh... Uh, that game was interesting. What, what yeah. were you saying? I got to like take a selfie with a uh, bird outside of a restaurant, and then that then I stopped playing. <laughs> I killed a large turtle that took ninety five minutes. Oh wow, Jesus! Yeah, I don't know. I fell off of that, like most Final Fantasies of late. The best thing about that game is the photos, like the selfies and the, all the photos. Yeah. Oh, the photos are so good. Yeah. yeah, and just the fact that there's the whole AI engine built around taking bad photographs like on purpose oh yeah yeah it's fucking Mm, great mm, mm. i took some of the worst pic like i posted some of the worst pictures from that game um online just because they it would be in the middle of a fight and it would be whatever action but somehow the camera was behind a tree yeah and (laughs) the branch is like covering everything except for you can see maybe one character's head or something like that. Otherwise, you th- there were times I'd look at it and I'd, and I'd have no idea what it was even trying to take a picture of. So <laughs> I, I really liked the pictures in that game. And there are a lot of parts about that game that I did enjoy, but I think I hadn't, I, I took issue with like the overall story of the game and the, and the flow of it. But I still had fun playing the, playing the game for, for the amount of time I put into it. Uh, mechanics wise it was really fun because it was a new way to play it you're playing it you know it's definitely not turn based it's more live action but the story of that game like I have I played through that game I got the platinum that it still makes no sense there are parts of that game that you go back and you look at like um like Prompto's whole story and you're like yeah. did you write this or did you just at the last second go oh shit we haven't talked about Prano, Prompto in like 25 hours we better uh, give him some backstory and then, oh, you know what? We're good on him. But let's move on. Yeah. I, I just felt like there wasn't any depth to any of the other characters on your team either. 
Um, and, and I did a lot of the side missions. I put about 45 hours into that game. And there were times when that game, like, absolutely blew me away with its presentation and, like, some of the fights and the, and the areas that it was in. And then, of course, visually. But then, like, the stuff that I liked in Final Fantasy, which was, like, all the, like, attention to detail and the, and the bits of nuances, I just felt like there wasn't as much of it in this game. And, and the stuff that was there, I didn't feel like was quality. Like I said, I didn't know anything mm. about the three other characters you played with. Like, one was a robot, the other one disappears for a while, uh, and one goes Wait, blind. Wait, one's a robot? Okay, that's what I'm talking about with Prompto. Do you want to talk about that, Brian? I, I mean, yeah, if, if that's fine with everybody, we don't... Uh, spoiler alert. Yep, spoilers but, uh, for yeah, this. Yeah, no, gonna... you could have said that before. One's a robot? Was that, like, a thing that came up with <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't pick up on that, and I played the game all the way through, so... Yeah. I Is must it the have glasses Yeah, one? I've heard... No. no, it's it's the blonde one with the who takes the photos. But what? he was a fat in the anime. He was a fat kid, and then he lost all his weight. I hey, so so here he here, was a fat <laughs> robot kid. Here we are. What the you fuck? Don't even, you don't even actually know what the fuck this character was. Half of us think <gasps> he's a robot. The other half of us think he, he thought he was like a fat kid. Like that's what I'm saying. We don't know. Like we don't. All right. When you got to I played the game. This all in, Jake. Seven, it, yeah, I played the game all the way through, and I didn't even pick up on that. That must have been he's like not technically <laughs> a robot. He's a yeah. I think he's more like a a produce test tube baby cloned blank slate because oh, he's yeah. like the... you find out he's got the fucking shining at one point with technology or something yeah, yeah i guess he's... so yeah yeah he's like he's like the um the enemy combatants that come down <coughs> yeah like those apparently or at least that's what they what they were trying to get at i don't know if yeah they're clones or if they're robots or if they're whatever but like there was so much about that game that just left that that i felt like i needed to go outside of the game to get information on and that was part of my gripe about the story it's like oh i didn't watch King, any of the king slave or whatever it's called um king slave yeah whatever yeah. it was i don't i don't remember <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> good you should watch it's like I it's like it. saying pepsi instead of pepsi oh no it's like saying <laughs> downtown abbey instead of saying downtown abbey <laughs> yep <America>. exactly <laughs> <laughs> downtown abbey that's that was my favorite joke to make whenever uh people were around they would talk about the show downtown abbey but they would always write it downtown abbey yeah so downtown I, I, abbey sounds like a very different kind of show absolutely <laughs> it sounds like a completely different show but uh but yeah that ultimately that was my biggest problem with final fantasy 15 is i felt like in the game it didn't I didn't have this like compelling reason to care about anything going on in it. Maybe down, maybe downtown right. Abbey could be like just a hella cool like vape shop in downtown LA. That's Fuck yeah. honestly what it sounds like. Yeah, and it would be like the downtown, downtown Abbey, Abbey theme. Let me ask: Did any of you guys who played it uh, get this bug? I got this like almost game breaking bug at the end that I could never fix, and I just had to deal with it for like the last maybe 15, 20 hours. Where when you were in battle, randomly the camera would just freeze and you would not be able to move it. And the only way to get it to move would be to use an item on somebody else. Uh, and huh. then it would just happen again every 30 seconds. You literally just, you can't move the camera and it'd be stuck like to the side of, um, shit, what's the big, I played that game for 65 hours. What's the main character's name? Prompto. Noctis? No. Noctis. 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 Yeah. Yeah, Noctis would go off and fight, and I'd just be looking at this fucking wall. Huh. <laughs> Shit. Uh, no, I, I had my own set of bugs playing that game. Like, I, I don't even remember half of them. Oh, one would be, like, not being able to select to talk to people. Not, you know, <laughs> the issue of it not coming up, but standing in front of somebody and just tapping X away and it not initiating the conversation. And, I, and like literally having to leave the area not by walking away but like to to reset the loading uh for it to be able to actually indicate the prompt that i that i that i had selected it it was Fuck. it was weird mm. it was weird glitches like that or like jumping when when i wasn't hitting any anywhere near the jump button um i just ran into a bunch of of weird minor glitches but many of them as i played the game so I was saying, uh, I keep having this bug where I go to play it, and Zach's playing FIFA 16 with his friend, and I don't really know how to fix that, and I keep trying, but it's just not working. He's, he's, just, playing the, he's just playing the best tactical RPG on the market. 
he doesn't <laughs> play anything but FIFA 16 and the new Zelda game. But it's that's, not, that's it's it. not even the newest one. And it's just it's just because he can take the new Zelda game on the toilet, but then he can go play FIFA 16 on his PS4 with his friend Tom. Oh, you can't even do poo poo with FIFA. Can't do poo poo with FIFA. You oh. can do poo poo with Zelda. Oh, nice. You could oh, do yeah. poo poo with FIFA if he got um, a Vita and oh. then did remote play, or he could do remote play on his computer. FIFA on the Vita. Yeah, but like that seems like a lot of effort when you just want to do a poo poo. Yeah, I think poo on the Vita. I think enough. Oh, oh. <laughs> Do poo poo on the Vita. That's genius. I didn't I think about it that way. Don't poo poo on a Vita. That's what Garrett said it. Yeah, there's no games coming out for it. What are you gonna do with the thing? <laughs> if you I'm ask, you're playing my Vita. Paper. I play my Vita. I've got my Vita here. At, I'm at my office, and I have my Vita here because I play it every day in between patients. I love my Vita. If you ask I me, I peed on an Ouya. Uh, uh huh. <laughs> if you ask me, what? I'd say Sony poo pooed on the Vita. Themselves. Oh. Oh. Huh? oh. They kind of did. I think when it comes to the Vita, they created something that wasn't that that the market wasn't ready for. Because if you look at it now, imagine it was released now. Oh, you have the remote play. You can play PlayStation Now yeah. on it. So you have oh. all of PlayStation Three games. You can play PS Two games on it now with the you know with the PSN games you could always play PlayStation 1 games and PlayStation Portal it was like you get the full Sony experience and you could take it with you um, but i don't think that technology was ready when they when they launched it cuz remember them saying i remember that's what that whole settlement was in america like i remember them saying you will be able to like play games or, like PS4 games from your Vita when you're not even home so that mm. was supposed to be like one of the biggest draws about that system and and i still use it like all the time when i travel because it has one of the greatest displays and like yeah i got all my ps1 games on there and gravity rush that uncharted game that came out on it was really cool it's but it's, it's a persona it's, machine it's not gonna yeah yeah it, it's not gonna yeah. give you first party hell yeah like like <laughs> <laughs> like it's not getting its own games, you know what I mean? It's not getting its own properties. It just yeah plays other properties, which is cool. At this point, it's like an archival machine, and it, it's yeah. a goddamn fine machine. It's a yeah. like you said, like the best display out there um, for handhelds. It's really, really, really cool at what it does. It just only kind of does, you know, <clears throat> the stuff that that's already out. Nothing new's yeah. coming out anymore. I'm fine I, with it. Like, yeah. Uh, my favorite part of Final Fantasy XV is <laughs> is, <laughs> is uh, right right at the end when um, you're about to ascend. Well, let's just say again, spoilers. Uh, at the end, you ascend to heaven with your wife, like you've lived a full long life. You've you've made the ultimate sacrifice, and <laughs> and in, in, oh, your, no, in your in your in your dying moments with the one that you love that you have that you've sought after throughout the whole game uh, you glance upon one final memory of your your long life lived and for me that was a photo of me standing looking dumb in front of a gas station <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect uh, after yeah, that's my great. Noctis uh, died and was on his deathbed I, had, I showed my dear love a picture that was taken of just a chocobo's ass <laughs> taking up <laughs> 65 percent of the the photo and nice. then you saw in the corner it was just ignis being hit and launched backwards <laughs> <laughs> i think mine was just like some picture of them in front of the lighthouse it wasn't anything like special at all like everybody that was in there in the game martin did the same oh, thing yeah. too martin like we we all chose we all basically chose the worst photo that we could find in our whole album and made that our lasting long memory for us to remember <laughs> as we ascended to heaven with our wife oh my god and that, man well, that ending was so bizarre Jesus. yeah i still haven't finished it That's i mean go finish it like it, it's it's okay but the, the last get too third of the last third of that game is such a fucking slog i don't like that you leave like the overworld and just go on this like this labyrinth of same yeah. corridors for like 10 fucking hours i played that i played the whole last third of the game where you leave the open world in one sitting like 
oh, from God. night from night through to sun up like and it was just like I, I don't think I think I must have I think I had to have played this last bit of this in one sitting because I would not come back to this like this is fucking torture you didn't oh, like yeah. the sad train ride with your blind friend <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all of a sudden fucking what's this dude what's the dude's name Ignis uh, Ignis yes. yeah Ignis Jake Ignis um <laughs> 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 He he gets he becomes blind at one point and then he's walking around with a cane at like a fifth of the speed that he was before and you're supposed yeah. to like slow down while going through the open marshlands no. and wait for him to catch up with you. It's yes. so fucking funny and, and you get like these battle pictures where like Ignis is just off in the corner with a cane wandering around. <laughs> the best part, the best part, is when you get too ahead of them, they start yelling at you yeah. for going too fast and i'm like are you fucking serious right now <laughs> <laughs> this guy shouldn't even be here the best fucking part is before all that they give you like a dialogue option that's bring ignis with you or leave him at the train and i put all right he's blind leave him at the train and gladio yells at you have some fucking decency we can't leave him by himself <laughs> yeah. yeah i think i chose that too i i chose like the answer that was like come on like i don't want to be the king that asks too much of my servants Fucking Gladio's got a shit ton of No, 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 ask away. He's <laughs> too much. Freshly blinded. <laughs> Please, now you guys are making me want to finish. the blind man to walk really fucking slowly with you. Just ruin your game. I mean, that's what it did. Honestly, I, I think what bothered me most about Final Fantasy XV is that at the beginning of it, it was so much fun and so cool to explore this world and then they remove you from that world that you got familiar with and you, and you think you're gonna go to another really big map or another area and you only really just go to two or three locations that like are just one is like an indoor location and you're there for like three hours four hours and then the other one is like just one city with like a little bit of extra but it's not nearly as big so i feel like they kind of like just kind of screwed themselves at the end because they they gave you this expectation of this big open world and then at the end of the game you can't go back to the old world you're at so you're stuck in this like much smaller less interesting place and and then like the game starts bugging out really bad too towards the end of the game well i mean at any time they do allow you to call your magic dog who can teleport you to the past yeah and so they, <sighs> that's you can't so go, cool like, i don't understand how that makes any sense but um it's a video game. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, that fucking simple. One of them could have a claw for a hand. And, you know, you can't really. Oh, where'd the claw come from? Mm, magic. And you just gotta accept it because it's a video game. It's also. That's a, bad storytelling, though. It's also a video game that opens with you pushing a car. Yeah. See? Yep. <laughs> Look, okay. You need some magic with some realism. That's right. I, you, you need some. I bought. You need some cut and noodle with your uh, marbles. I actually, I, I respect that they made uh, this really beautiful dog even more magical than it already was, just being a regular dog. So Dude, the, the dog can read books. It's crazy. The dog is yeah. fucking terrific. I'm and that's not me completely being biased. Look, I'm not disparaging the magic dog. Don't I'm simply saying I'm not talking shit on the magic dog. Don't fucking talk any shit. <laughs> Don't shit on, on the my dog. Ruby, magic boy. All right, Ruby. To God. I, I have, have a, a history. Dog. I have a history of being a big fan of cool dogs. I'm Are just you saying. Sure you don't hate dogs. I heard you were a dog hater, Ryan. I well, no, that's different. Uh, if as long as the dog oh. is not in a Ubisoft game, I love it. If a dog is in a Ubisoft game, I will shoot it in the face. Oh, uh -huh. but this is Square oh. Enix. That's yeah. That's... So that's fine. It's only okay. dogs in Ubisoft games. Okay. Um, I heard you can down a big red in one gulp. <laughs> <laughs> whoop whoop. <laughs> that's some family shit right there. Family. Ryan, my friend, I love you so much. Oh, we do <laughs> love you, Ryan. We do. Man, I love you, Ryan. Sorry. Anyway, Final Fantasy 15 was a weird game. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Oh, can I talk about a game? Yeah. 
Oh, cool. Okay. But oh uh, wait, um, I, I feel I feel like we are receiving a transmission from the cat dimension right now. I mean, we would. Oh whoa. I know we were talking uh, about like Final Fantasies, but like you guys can't hear that. I I can definitely hear that. It's it's faint, it up. but yeah, it's there. It's it's low in the background. It's on a back channel. <laughs> And now we have a dramatic pause, and we wait for the cat dimension to to bring in our guest as as like technology will allow. And I'm gonna keep stalling for time here, and we're gonna keep talking. And oh, look, look, the cat dimension brought us a person, and here's the person. Fucking hell! I am so fucking sick of fucking thirty-year-old moms. With those <laughs> shit kids who will never go fucking pro, <laughs> taking up the fucking road all fucking Saturday. Yeah. Hi everyone. Hey, what's up? Hey there. Hey. Hi Zach. Hey, hey Zach. everyone. So, who have we got here? My brother Zach and us. How are you? I'm uh, I'm good. I'm hot and sweaty. Probably flunked a few housing inspections, so I'm gonna live with my parents forever. Be sick. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, That's great. That means that we can share the switch forever too. No, Just I'm like you talking. said, sir. No, 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 no. Hey, everybody. Zach said he'd share the switch with me when he bought oh, it, and then the next cool. day he talked about moving out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Trust no one. Only God can judge me. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Now, I'm pretty good at judging too. Hey. That is, that is what that is what Tupac said. That's what that's what people that's what people who watch Fast and the Furious Seven more than three times say too. Okay. It's um. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Hold on. Time out. Are you talking shit on the Fast and the Furious franchise, Zach? Before we go there, I think oh. it's really important. Zach did mention before he doesn't know who's present right now. Can we all just take some time to like introduce ourselves to Zach? Like he might just not have. Time. He might not have met us before, and I, th I feel we need to, like, make my brother, who I love so much, very welcome. I say I love you, brother, I give you a kiss. We're going to introduce ourselves all to you and just tell us a bit about ourselves. Uh, who, wants to, who wants, you know, like, who wants to go first? I'll, I'll just encourage anyone to go first. Should we I'll see if first. he can guess, John? Ruby, please go first and introduce yourself to me. Um, <laughs> hi, hi, Zach. My name is Ruby. Um... I'm your sister, you tried to kill me multiple times when I was a baby, but I'll never fucking die, so deal with it. <laughs> that's a... That's a good intro. I don't like you. Love I'll get, you. move on to the next one. Next. Uh, hey, Zach. This is, uh, your friend Garrett here. Uh, when I was a kid, I could only draw sharks, and, uh, I still, uh, watch DVDs and listen to CDs. Oh, whoa. So I'm guessing Garrett's pretty old, and that um, I like Garrett more than Ruby so far though, because I have a misplaced sense of nostalgia for ancient technologies as well. Mm, let's see, who's bachelor number three? Shuts out. Hey, hey, Zach, it's me, Ryan, and I've already seen The Fate of the Furious three times in theaters. You're garbage. <laughs> <laughs> you are displayed. Fuck that. Next, Fuck you. Who's bachelor number. <laughs> we're all, we're all on he a would, first name only basis so far. It's all right. It's uh, I think first name only basis is like comfortable with swearing. Okay. But it's once you get it's once you get to last names where you where you meet the parents and it starts getting upsetting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Brian, you want to say some words? Yes, I will. Um, hi, I'm Brian, and um, I like to spend as much of my time as I can without a shirt on. I like Brian the most so far. Um, Brian, what are your interests and hobbies? Uh, I like video games. I play them video games. Um, oh, okay, that's what- hold on, hold on. I'm gonna stop you right there, Brian, because video games are for children. So, uh -huh. I'm gonna move on to Bachelor- yep, I'm sorry. Damn video it. games, in all- in all forms, even if- even if the console was released in 1985, and you playing it as a youth would make you in your late 30s, you are a fucking child. <laughs> because it-, it I, I'm not aware what kind of podcast I'm on, nor do I- uh, I mean, I, I do love, I do love the, uh, I do love the cult, and I do a lot for my cult. But Thank you. one thing I will never do for gaming cult is play a fucking video game. I, I'm, right. I heard that you like to play FIFA, though. Yeah, we heard I, you play FIFA. Yeah, but that, that's that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a that's a that's a big boy game. 
That's a big boy game that you play to practice for your real game. What about all, any genre, any yeah, console? Said, yeah. What, what about all the stipulations? Yeah, what about, like... You said oh, are we talking about FIFA being the greatest role-playing game of all time? But well, it's a game. You just game. said it was a game. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> it is. It, I mean, it, I, I, it's I, a child. Jesus Christ. I, I Zach's a little poopy pants child. But oh, wait. I heard Zach pooped his pants. Garrett, wait. I, I, shut up. Yeah. Shut up. Garrett, Garrett, my friend, I love you so much. You say, you say that my brother from time to time... Ruby, I need to, like... Can I, can, can I just get a countdown from... If you want to talk so much, you give me a countdown from 7 to, like, tell something to Garrett right now. Yep. Okay, seven, six, five. <laughs> five. Three, one. What up to four? Uh, Garrett, my friend, I love you so much. You say my brother, he poop, he poop pants from time to time. Yeah, I say uh, Zach Innes, a uh, little baby uh, boy boy, go poop in his pants because he plays uh, vid games like a child because he is a child. Oh, wow. He releases my inner child and fuck you, it keeps me warm in the winter. <laughs> what? Doing the, <laughs> doing, the, doing, the, doing the poop pants, my brother? My brother. Yeah. You say that, you well, say that poop think- pants makes you warm in the winter times. Astronauts shit their pants in space, why can't I? <laughs> You don't go, you, you're not in space. Fair point. But you That's know what? In space. space is the I mean, place. yeah, if you want to get metaphysical, metaphysical, we're all in space right now. Yeah, Doctor's opinion? Yeah, exactly. Space is the place. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Listen, um, you go right, I go left. <laughs> Did Randy Savage pick up Ashley? <laughs> oh, my space. God. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear you over cyber. We are in what space. Happened? God Jared, damn. I can't hear you over cyber ghosts. Ruby, did you dude. take the red Ruby. pill? <laughs> Ruby and Prompto are both androids. Did he take the red pill? <laughs> Ruby, my sister, are you there? Are you okay? Uh, do I sound like a... Do I still sound like a robot? Sing, yes. sing, sing one more time. <laughs> Musical. <laughs> Ruby, sing one more time. <laughs> oh, Jesus, oh my fuck! God. My sister, I love you so much. Yes. Ruby has become the cyber devil she always wanted. She's to out be. in the middle of the bush right now. You can't blame her. Hang on. Is she on walkabout? She, yeah, she's on walkabout right now. <laughs> Don't say that! Uh, <laughs> you go and walk about. She's become oh, assimilated. Do you guys remember Lenny's walkabout on shockwave.com? No. Uh, what? That sounds familiar. When, when, like, the, when, like, internet gaming, like, when the Shockwave plugin came out, there was a website we used to go to, this was, like, in ninth or 10th grade, that had, like, all the Flash games. And the big one that me and my friends played was called Lenny's Walkabout, and it was you as this weird, like, little white dude walking around talking about, we, I- I'm going on Walkabout. I got to find all me friends on Walkabout. It was real bad. Right. Oh, that was a good one. I remember Wesley, which was arguably worse. But <laughs> the year, That was the age of, like, edgy Flash games. I still remember I still remember Club of Seal on Newgrounds when that came out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the celebrity death page? Yeah. Fuck oath. Pico, yeah. All that shit. I still remember, what was that song that was like... And they just play that techno song on fucking repeat on, on the... Oh, it's uh, Pico. Yeah, it's Pico. Yeah, that's the one. Um, Shout out Tom Paul. That's right. God damn it, we used to talk on uh, MIRC. No, I used, to t- I used to talk to Wade Fulp a lot on, like, AIM. That's weird. Oh, yeah. His brother. Uh, so I'm bachelor number five, I think? Yep. Yeah, I think you are. Go ahead. All right. Um, uh, hi, I'm I'm Jake Ennis, your brother. Um, I think it's illegal for us to date and become partners, but, you know, obstacles are there to be overcome, so. <laughs> Jake, I'm going to leave you to the final rounds because it's good television and, pe- and the audience will be shocked. Yeah. Jake, God, you are... Smart. Exactly. It's... Well, put it this way. We have sibling... We have... We have a sister and a brother-in-law that are in reality television and they'd kill for some un- like, unknowing incest. So yeah, I'm going right. to go ahead with it and then we're going to leave yeah. it at one kiss and it'll be like Star Wars. 
Nice. <laughs> <laughs> one of the most popular. Like Star Wars. There you go. One of the most popular movies ever made with some disgusting incest. Yeah. Exactly. Right there, on the lips. Yeah, but how are they gonna uh, how are they gonna do do it better in the Last Jedi? Is Rey gonna fuck her dad and then find out it's Luke Skywalker? Ew. <laughs> It's the only Everything like, is cyclical. Yeah, if you look at the Force Awakens, it was a new, it was a New Hope 2.0. The only way, but it was like a New Hope, but bigger, better. And in twenty, and in twenty fifteen, what about we take Star Wars into twenty seventeen with the Last Jedi, and Rey's gonna fuck her dad? No, Aww. they're gonna make Poe and Finn uh, be boyfriends. Oh, uh, that that's close. It's. I'd say it's a good bet. I, I, I'm more for the what? BL route on this one. Like, they're both boys? I can't remember. Yeah, they're both boys. Yeah, Finn and Poe are, bo are boys, and they're going to be boyfriends. Oh, yeah, who's, yeah. Your Star, who's your Star Wars OTP? I want, I want Garrett's answer. Oh, uh, definitely Mon Mothma and nice. the Dianoga in the uh, oh. trash compactor on the uh, detention level. Nice. It's like that big nice. eyeball. I feel like I, I want to have fan art made of that big eyeball sliding its way up the white robes of Mon Mothma. And it's not young Mon Mothma. It's uh, the older Mon Mothma from uh, Empire. Mature Mon Mothma. <clears throat> yeah. All big, amateur, mature Mon Mothma. Yeah, yeah. I'm down with that. All right. I'm down with that. Cool. Yeah, Dianoga Mon Mothma. That's my OTP. Nice, that's good. My, personally, mine's Sheev Palpatine and probably Plo Koon. Oh, you're fuck in, yeah, Plo You're Koon. into some extended universe shit. Oh yeah, remember, expanded universe is in the minds of some of the Star Wars fans who spent fucking years editing the, the Wikipedia page with every single <laughs> fucking piece of expanded universe <laughs> that we had. With that, or I, how I spent the entirety of my teenage fucking years, it's all still legitimate to me. Shouts Disney out Galaxies. It's fucking canon anymore, but god fucking damn it, to me it's real. <laughs> <laughs> but Disney came along and they're like, oh yeah, none of it matters anymore. I'm like, well, great. Like, well, I guess my like being a teenager didn't fucking matter because I spent all all of my time consuming fucking like you know Star Wars media. But yeah, it it, it, it sucked kind of big time, especially when I realized it's the only place in which my information is now relevant are fucking shit posting pages on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Zach, listen. Disney um, is not the boss of you. Don't let their so law, Don't no. let their word be law. Neither exactly. is that bird with Ruby right now. Hmm? Neither is that bird with Ruby right now. Um, it's actually like a I think a drill. No, or well, like a <laughs> chainsaw. I don't know. <laughs> it sounded like a magpie. I'm in the fucking wilderness. Yeah. Like, shouts out. Uh, yeah. I saw a wallaby. Oh, really? It's pretty funny that you're in the wilderness. Yeah, for a yeah, fucking I saw day. a wallaby. It was really cute. Um, we were like in our cabin and we all just like looked over the balcony and there was just this wallaby just like kind of standing on the path looking at us and I said, oh. hey, and it looked at me and I was like, fuck yeah. What's That's a, Matt, cool. a, what's a wallaby? Is that Rocko's Modern Life? Is that a wallaby? Yeah. Dude, well, yeah. A wallaby okay. is like a small kangaroo. Yeah, okay. It's a small, it's like a kangaroo that won't fuck you up or destroy your car. Yeah, it's like oh. a kangaroo that's not, uh, not buff. It's like a, it's like a, you know how it's like a, a mad buff? If you, yeah, it's like a it's pussy like kangaroo. That. If you it's like go, a little like bitch whole, kangaroo. It's like a shittier fucking, kangaroo. Fucking, look, listen here, cunt. Listen here, cunt. If you go on state to state <laughs> at like 3am, you go on from fucking Adelaide to fucking Melbourne, <laughs> it's fucking 3am, you've gone past the giant koala, you see it's red eyes glow in the dark, that's fine, you think that's just, that's just like a big giant 10 foot, 10 story paper mache building that's fine that's not gonna hurt me but if like a fucking red rue you hit that in the middle of the fucking night it fucking go it wrecks up your bumper goes through the front windscreen mm -hmm. kicks you to death fuck that no mate mm. like wallabies like they're, they're small they're small cunts they'll, they'll do all right for you yeah the wallaby will just like die but the kangaroo yeah. will die and fuck up your shit I've got a friend called Lachlan who spent over twenty-five thousand dollars in kangaroo-related damages because he works. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the thing is, like, the way that the way that like insurance like policies in Australia stipulate themselves, you can't swerve 
to avoid the kangaroo because then you won't be covered if an accident occurs. You have to hit the fucking dead on to be covered by insurance. I, I just, exactly. I just, I just laugh so hard for that statement on my head. I'm a little woozy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Um, I forgot about it, but can I talk about a video game? Absolutely. But first, Brian, who do you want to fuck in the Star War? <laughs> uh, yeah, this I, is important. Brian, go ahead. I gotta go Ungar Plot and um, Dash Rendar, I think would be a good no, one. I, oh, fucking Harry. I think they'd be very cutthroat and uh, they'd get a lot done. I just want Boss Nass to 69 himself to death. Oh. 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 <laughs> 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 Fishy. I'm just real sad that I'm not hearing enough uh, like Lobot love here because Lobot as a robot would know how to like please you the best because you could program him to do whatever you wanted. Okay. Yeah, but where's the yeah. intimacy in fucking robot? Well, he's not a robot though. I, I'm sorry. He's a he's like a cyborg, so yeah. he's still got Actually, human part, but you can make oh, him man. do what you want. I watched a documentary because you just said you know where's the intimacy. I still watched a documentary on Netflix about dudes who are into sex robots and they don't give a fuck about the intimacy they yes, like the fact yes. that they're fucking a robot i saw that same thing and yeah. i made a prom i made a promise like i've had this conversation a few times because we were talking about isaac asimov at work and i mm. said yeah but what about like well robots are gonna f eventually we're gonna be able to fuck robots right and people yeah. were like well yeah and then i was like well as soon as they get like like fuck westworld like this was before like that whole thing came came around like as soon as the robot gets some kind of like sentience, it's okay to fuck robot, right? As long as like robot consents to robo fucking. Because like the thing is, like, I mean, if you if if you've got someone that wants to fuck a robot, is the first thing on their mind gonna be like, are they gonna give me a kiss on the cheek? No, it's gonna be like, I want to fuck this metal puss. Like that's that's <laughs> the realism of it. Pretty much. Well, well, well no, because like they use like synthetic like rubbers and stuff that feel like human skin so no nah, fuck that cold, cold, were, cold steel a metal, cuddling a robot yeah. would you be the big spoon or the little spoon neither because oh, you put it in the fucking lit. closet and go to sleep absolutely <laughs> no, I, would I would not cuddle I, I, with my robot bullshit <laughs> <laughs> bullshit you wouldn't cuddle robot <laughs> you would oh, I'm sorry oh, Zach I, wait, wait, I really Zach. It's like having to anybody in my bed when I'm asleep like I it, it's it's like I'm so specific about how I want to sleep like when I when I get hot, I cannot sleep at all. And if there's mm -hmm. another person in my bed, 99% of the time, it is a furnace under there. So, you why the fuck would I want a machine under there, let alone a person? You put Dude. an air conditioning unit in Fuckbot, then you have the perfect temperature <laughs> under oh my the sheets. I've changed you my mind. Want. You are absolutely right. I would put a air conditioner inside of Fuckbot, and it would be a personalized, like, like pod of comfort. That's a great exactly. idea. <laughs> Just <laughs> right, so comes over there like, oh, your house is so cool. What is that? Oh, my fuckbot. Uh, yeah. Good, good night, fuckbot. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna keep your fuckbot out when you have guests? Are you gonna be like, and here's where I keep my fuckbot? Or no, you're gonna put that thing in the fucking closet no, in shame, I'll and you're not gonna let anyone if, see your fuckbot. No, you hey, know you, what? I'll leave it out, and I'll invite people to to fuck the fuckbot because that's its purpose. <laughs> Much like you, you know, when you have when you're sharing a pizza with somebody, you have your own little like. No, oh, that's not the same. Put on top of it. Yeah, the it's same hiding. thing. Tool that they put inside the fuck bot, so that everything will be clean. <laughs> they're not using the same orifice as you. They're just using basically the shell of fuckbot. Garrett, well, if yeah, you went, <laughs> if you went over to Brian's house right now, so, like, would you, you accept an invitation when, to yeah, fuck the fuckbot? Yeah, there's a party Brian's house. Instead of like solo cups with a, you write your name on. He just hands out fake vaginas, and you write your your name on the side. And like, all right, this is your insert for fuckbot. Yeah, exactly. No, one <laughs> just like a mouthpiece for when you're show, when you're smoking a hookah. You just, I would bring you pass over... out the hookah, but you change the mouthpiece. Okay, but the question is, thinking about hookah, like, don't you throw I mean, out the like mouthpieces afterwards? Sure. That sounds awful. <laughs> right. So you're going. There would be a Ruby... spot there too. <laughs> hey, you know what? Or, I'd like, have a what? I'd have a party and have a ratio of fifty percent fuckbot and fifty percent people. So if you if, if, or if you get everyone to bring their fuckbots, like 
You, like, yeah. just like how when you bring, like, your significant other to the party, you can, like, yeah. you don't have to even worry about the mingling, you can just hook the fuckbots up to each other to, like, you know, fuck all night, and they can- and Oh, yeah. And so they'll be all warmed up and ready, and they'll know, like, they'll- they'll mark, like, they'll learn how to fuck better, because they'll download fuck programs yeah. from other fuckbots, and so you can that download the fucking style of people at that party, so you won't even have to fuck the people at that party they're human, because they're fuckbot, and your fuckbot will now replicate their style of fucking. Well, exactly. match my fuck style. I I'm just imagining, like, the Tupperware-style party where all the ladies come over to try the new styles of fuckbots. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Okay. Alright, you know what? You've convinced me. I'm down with fuckbot. You know what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're talking about fuck styles. I'm just gonna stick with my Wu-Tang style. Thanks very much. <laughs> oh. Alright, um, I'm gonna go for third time lucky. Can I talk about a video game? <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go ahead. That's all I want to do. Um, I can't get fuckbots out of my mind. This is the Game and Cult podcast. Could you have a fuckbot that has like a, a screen on the back so while you're fucking it you could play video games? No, but they can be two player, I guess. Okay, cool. Ruby, all right. go ahead. Okay, everyone shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, I mean, I've been playing a little bit of uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild and a little bit of just uh, random stuff on PS4. I bought a game called Ether One, which is really good, but the main game that I've been playing recently is Stardew Valley on the PC. And Stardew Valley is really, really good. Stardew it's, Valley is so good. It's so good. It's everything I want wanted in a Harvest, like a, a modern Harvest Moon game, because Harvest Moon, for a while, has gone to shit and just got real bad. And then Stardew Valley came out, and it was just really, really, really good. And you, I, me, a woman, I can get a wife, and I did. I got the mean girl called Haley. She wasn't very nice to Hell me. Yeah. She, she made fun of my clothes, but then when <laughs> I kept giving her son flowers, she was nice to me, and then we got married. That's the tallest flower, I mean. Ru Ru Ruby, you wanna hear something great? I also yeah. married Haley. <gasps> no way! Cause she's the best one, cause she starts as the blonde, the mean blonde bitch who's like, I don't got time for you, and I won her over, and I made her my wife, and then I knocked her up. Exactly, I haven't knocked her up yet, but it's such a fun game. And it's, it's just, it's so wholesome, and really calming, and, and I've made so much money that isn't real, but that's not the point. And, and I've got four cows, and I've got four goats, and i got four chickens, and i got four ducks, and I don't give... Uh, what's four times four? I don't give sixteen fucks. That was rhyming. Nice. And nice. um, thank you. And it's just it's just a very very good game. Um, I guess what what really won me over about it was the was like it it the uh how do I explain it? So the different things that you pass around the game, like like the different quests you get, um all depend on different things you do in the game and there are certain items that you need for certain quests that you can only get by doing this certain thing and helping this certain person and like there's so much progression in the game on so many different levels that like it, it makes you want to want to finish it all and it makes you want to get this so you can get this so you can get this so you can get this and uh, like there's a mushroom that you can only find in this uh, secret forest and you can only get to the secret forest if you've got a steel axe and you can only get a steel axe if you've got iron bars and like it, it's it's fun it's that really, really cool. fun and good it, it's such a fucking good game i loved the harvest moon series so much the more recent ones that came out weren't that good and didn't impress me that much and then stardew valley came out different art style but like at first i wasn't that into the art style but i did get used to it and it's oh it's just such a good fucking game that's pretty neat. Just yeah. I have one question. I have one question or statement. So, um, so this woman that you've chosen to marry, hmm. like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure she's not the most exotic choice. But she sounds pretty like you know general like you know oh she's right. meant to me. I love her fantasy, but she, she's a basic say, bitch. Uh, would you say I don't that like she's, that tone actually. She's my wife. Uh, if like, it, <laughs> don't talk shit about my wife. She starts Actually, that way because she's my wife too. She starts that yeah. way and then she grows into a better character. Yeah. Hey, Jake, Wait, so hey, Jake. hold on. Yeah, let me, yeah. let me just my say. wife. <laughs> 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 it's 
nice. He's nice, my wife. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, guys. <laughs> hey, hey, you, you can on, buy. You can buy. You can buy. <laughs> Would, so would you say that by being mean to you and that she is both your wives? I wasn't like finished doing my fucking Borat impression, love Zach. My, my wife. Yeah. I Get want to say movie. something. I didn't like her because she was mean to me. I liked her because one, she was hot, and two, I knew I could change her, and I did. And now she's my fucking wife. Because number one, she was blonde, and number two, she likes going to the beach, and mm. she likes seashells. So, like, you know, we get along on that, and she loves mayonnaise. Yeah, she does. She loves yeah. mayonnaise. No. So that's why I picked her. Mm. Mayonnaise like, is a great condiment. It's it's cool because like with with um with with her character, I feel like her character probably because because I played it a few times like just to see what the progression was like, um, and um. Her progression from being kind of like mean and a bit conceited and yada 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 only really cared about like fashion and the beach and yada yada. Seeing her go from that to like being like, oh, I still like to, you know, make myself pretty and buy nice clothes, but it's not the biggest part of my life. And she likes photography. And she likes to talk about She really likes pictures. photography. Oh, and oh, like the very, the very um, final um, heart scene you have with her is you go to her house and she's in her like photography dark room and um she shows you how she like makes the pictures and whatnot and then in the dark you give her the kiss and oh. it's really nice oh wow oh it's really cute oh. it's a very cute game it's it's very lovely is the, there, yeah, my, my favorite like oh sorry go ahead go on no you go ahead i was gonna say my favorite thing in all of stardew valley is that the mayor asks you to find his lucky purple uh, boxer oh my shorts, God. and you find them in another lady's uh, bedroom. So yeah. you have to become friends with her until she'll let you in her bedroom, and then and you then can you get back to pick up the pants. You find out they've been having sex, and you can give them back, or you can wait until the harvest festival, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, then the and then you can you get on the harvest festival day. There's a you know you get to show the wares of your your farm. And you get a box where to put in your different, you know, your your cheeses and your apples. And if you want, you can put the mayor's underpants in the middle of your thing. The mayor runs up and says, what are you trying to do, boy? It gives you second place just to shut you up and takes his pants back and then is very mad at you. It's actually right. considered a disqualification, but you still get the points. Yep. That's awesome. Uh, it's great. It's 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 got its it's got its own humor to it. It's it's a really really nice good game. I give it um uh one hundred stars. Whoa, that's a lot of stars. That's a that's a lot of timber. Yeah, really? out of what? I love it. Yeah, out of, out of what? Uh, oh, out of out of one hundred. Oh, okay, cool. Just keep it at one hundred. Ruby, do the, do the Borat impression. Um. Oh, oh, actually, can I do uh, an impression of um, Borat doing an impression of me? Yeah, do whatever you want. That's fine. It's <laughs> yeah, a okay. podcast. Okay. My wine. <laughs> I like uh, it. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm for it. Shouts out. Oh, the birds oh, like oh, it, too. The birds like yeah, it. Yeah, they <laughs> love, it. love it. They Put love the it. Wallabies into They're it. saying it, too. I heard them say it. My, my wine. wine. <laughs> my, 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 wine. Yeah. my wine. My wine. My wine. It's funny. Hey, you know, like carrots. Yeah. So they actually just keep saying it back at me. It, it actually feels quite <laughs> mocking. It's fucking awful now. <laughs> fucking cunt. Fuck him. <laughs> stupid. Oh he's not stupid. <laughs> he's not. He's Eric. Not Stop Eric. saying it. Fucking cunt. Have you seen? Have you have you all seen the video of the Australian cockatoo on the Vegemite throw rug? It's the single most like ocker Aussie Australian like vi viral video no. ever. I don't know if uh, I have. Oh, it's it, so it's this the cockatoo keeps spitting at the dog. The dog jumps up to like you know have a nip at the cockatoo, and the cockatoo calls him a fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Also, he's, he's on a Vegemite throw rug as well. Beautiful. While, while, while the cockatoo's owner shrieks in the background, leave him alone. He's not, he's stupid. not stupid. He's not stupid. He's not a kind. 
Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. There's another one where the bird eats broccoli. My sister, I love you so much. I say thank you. And love you all, boys. Bye, Ruby. Have a good love you, Ruby. Bye. Good to hear from you. And then there were some of us. Um, right. This is the gaming called hey. podcast. It's episode fifty-six. Uh, well, my boys, I was just I was just thinking. This is the gaming called podcast, and we are known for like certain things. Right. Oh yeah. And my friends, one of those things is is that fanfic. Oh, nice. Oh. And oh, I, yeah. I, we don't, I know, like, Zach, my brother, 321 Zach, actually, 7653421 Zach, do you have, do you have the fanfic? Do you oh have it? Oh, my God. I, yeah. I, I don't have the, uh, that's what, what the that fuck? message meant. You sent me a picture of that paperclip that was, like, the Microsoft paperclip that was pregnant, and I didn't know what <laughs> you were getting at. <laughs> I didn't know at all what you were getting at. It's all right. I, I sent I sent it to Eric too at like six o'clock in the morning. His time, you know, just as a nice little I wake up that. present. Yeah, that was great. But well, that's Zach, my brother. That's okay because, oh, as we have done before oh, oh, in the past, I would say that oh, we could do one off the cuff. Fuck, I love Sonic. All right, if you want it to be Sonic, it, it, if you want it to be Sonic, then it's got to be. It's got to be. We're familiar with the territory. We know the characters. This is our... Uh, this is our... Wheelhouse. House. Yeah, wheelhouse. Thank you. God. <laughs> Unless you want to venture into Mario Brothers. In the, the Mushroom <laughs> Kingdom. Dude, like, they could do... Check this why out. Like, why don't they, they, they visit? Could do, they could do drugs. Oh, man. Yeah. What if it's Mario and Sonic? You know, not at the Olympics. At, <laughs> but at Coachella. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic and Mario at Coachella. Should we actually right. do that? Fuck it, we're going to Coachella. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know. I know. Meg Ghost is on the lineup, and that's about it. So, um, who else is in the lineup? Kendrick Lamar. The- Beyonce <laughs> right. got pregnant, so she can't go now. All right. Uh, that's- uh, uh, Radiohead, and they walked off twice. Oh, really? Yeah. Fuck Earth, I can work with this. All right, all right. All right we're gonna Jake? need. We're gonna need. We're gonna need. Like, whose characters? I, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that'll be Shadow again because why not? You know, why? Why? Why mess with we, the class? Okay, so there's five of us, and if Zach's a director, two of us should be Mario characters, and two of us should be Sonic characters. Yeah, I'll be exactly. Luigi. Okay. All right. Uh. So that leaves me and Brian. He's either Sonic and Mario. Brian, so. who do you want to be? Do you want to be Sonic or Mario? I will be. I guess I'll be Sonic. Oh, how do you even do Sonic? You just talk about chili dogs. Hey, whoa, hey. Oh, okay. Hey, uh. That's it. Yeah. Uh, that's it. I. How do you be Mario? Do you just talk in a racist it's Italian me. accent? Yeah. Hey, it's me, Mario. I'm here at Coachella. Just do it. Do it dead. Oh hey, what's up? It's me, Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be yeah it'll, it'll, it'll be like every one of those Mario parodies on YouTube where people just deadpan it, but it sounds more <laughs> like they're from fucking Boston than they are like you know an Italian plumber. Oh, hey, we'll fucking go. Just be hey, hey, okay. Hey, no, hey. all right. So here's here's the idea then. Mario and Luigi are just dead, deadpan, and and fucking Sonic and Shadow are full on um, all right, cartoony. Let's do it. Yeah. And Zach, Shit, yeah, you, no. Zach, you are absolutely everyone else. All right, I'm. I'm not only okay. I'm our director, so as well our slash narrator. Okay. I'm gonna fucking okay. So I'm gonna kick off this train wreck. Um, first off, let me intro this. So this is completely off the cuff once again. Um, we've got our lovely boys going in. Uh, everyone's taken up their mantles. We're really excited about this one. Mm-hmm. We all bought tickets. We're fucking ready. Mario and Sonic are going to Coachella. So Yeah, guys, we're going to Coachella! Awesome. So, the scene begins. Through the gates, asses clenched. Tightly. Succulently. But, but what vessel lies between those cheeks? Dogs? No. None in sight. Undercovers? No. None in sight either. Sneaking a look into his overalls into the back. Luigi has a peek at whether their stash 
will be smuggled in successfully. Hmm. Looks like all these sheets of acid are tightly secured away in my overall pocket here. Mario, my brother. Hey, it's a me, Mario. Would you pass me that water bottle? I feel like having a little drink before we go through the security checkpoint. <laughs> this cotton mouth's got me a little pa 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 paranoid. Okay, okay, Luigi, but don't drink it all. This is all we brought for all three days of Coachella. Well, hope not, uh, Mario! Mario! I spilled that water down the front of my overalls. It's, it's penetrating into the sheets of acid and running into my skin across my Italian chest hairs right into my paws. Mario! Luigi, that's oh. all That's all we have to get high Mario. and listen to, to Beyonce. I'm starting to see things, Mario. You're going to have to do the talk and take the wheel. All right. All right, Luigi. Keep calm. We're coming up to the security guards now. But we got to play it cool. They're not going to let us into Coachella. Just follow my lead. Oh, oh, oh mamma mia. Staring into the security guard's face, Luigi began to tremble. Eyes moved in all kinds of directions, chameleon-like. In, in their intensity. As this happened, his pupils expanded, dilating the light, and the security guard's face morphed ever so a tinge of blue, some would say. And slowly, slowly his limbs elongated, and as his, as his black boots began to morph into red, red, somewhat speedy looking shoes, staring back at Mario, and Luigi was Sonic the Hedgehog. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, Sonic, it's we're we're at Coachella now, and I don't know if I even want to be here. But you said that today we were gonna do drugs, but I don't know if we should do that because my mom smoked marijuana once and now I talk like this so I don't even know what we're doing who are we seeing first wait is that Mario and Luigi over there yeah it's Mario and Luigi guys are you excited for the lineup or what holy shit Mario that fucking mouse is talking to me man uh, I'm not a mouse I'm a hedgehog and I'm cool hey guys it's me Mario uh and I just want to say uh I can't wait to get into uh, Coachella because my favorite band, uh, Radiohead, is playing, and I know for sure they're definitely not going to disappoint. Whoa, whoa. Mario, Mario, I'm coming back to baseline. You know how fast that LSD works its way through my system. Hey, <clears throat> hey, man, keep it hey, down. We don't, want, we don't want people to know we're bringing in LSD. Whoa, whoa. What the hell's wrong S with Sonic the Luigi, Shadow. Man? Sonic! Shadow! I didn't know you guys were here. What's, what's happening, We've man? We've been standing in front of you for, like, five minutes, Luigi. Like, what's wrong with Yo, you? Yo, Luigi, you were tripping straight ball! Hey, did someone say we were gonna score some drugs here? Because that's why me and Mario came. I mean, that's the whole reason. But we're out, man. We're Look, totally, don't, like... Don't Bill, talk... what are you talking about? Mm. You were supposed to be bringing it in! Jeez. I, I... Mario, can you explain this? Don't worry, guys. Uh, once again, hey, it's me, Mario. I just want to say that. And um, while all the LSD might have been seeped up through Luigi's butt cheeks, it's what? me, Mario, and you know I always got those magic mushrooms. <laughs> Mario coming through I with the mushrooms. I always yeah. thought that was just like a bit. I thought that was a joke that everybody always made around you. Like when you, I didn't know you were like in on that bit as well. Nope, it's not a bit. It's me, Mario, and I am heavily addicted to hallucinogenic mushrooms. Wow, okay. He, my brother, my brother's so smart, man. You see, he puts it out there in everyone's eyes like plain sight, man, and they like totally think that's what he's all about, but they don't know that he really, uh, he really is. Like uh, I hey, saw, pass, pass, pass those mushrooms, man. Pass those mushrooms, Mario. I saw this yeah, thing on the end. Yeah, spread out. I saw this thing All on the right. internet of like you guys doing drugs, but I thought that was just like a fan like thing. I didn't know you guys were like into that for real. 
No, that's, that's 100% official. Everyone knows that I, Mario, love drugs. It's the real deal. He does. Mario but, and Luigi. But keep it down, guys, because we're not in yet. And if security finds out we have drugs, we won't be able to see Radiohead. Okay. Slowly but surely, before the entire bit descended into a horrible YouTube parody section, the narrator steps in to move along the story. Smiling, the security guard permits entry as he sees that the drugs have successfully worn off from Luigi. Hey guys, feel free to go in. As they walk through, Thank you. they realize, sh shit, the set times they hadn't prepared. Right now, on the outdoor stage, even though every stage at Coachella is an outdoor stage, <laughs> they spot him. Tom York has walked onto the stage. Hi everyone, I'm Tom York from Radiohead. I haven't made a good album in about 12 years and I got rejected for the James Bond theme and I'm still bitter. I can't wait to not play you guys music. Wow, oh, he just Mario. went he just went straight out and like said that on stage, Sonic. That's crazy. Oh no, I'm Sonic! Loser. Sonic, Luigi, Shadow, they're starting and we're all the way back here. Sonic, can you get us to the front row? You're so fast. I can get myself there fast, but you guys would be on your own. I'll clear away because, uh, you know, I, I have a gun and everything. I'm Shadow. Hey! Shadow, you brought your gun? Guys, I'm Shadow the Hedgehog. Clear the way. Shadow! I'm going to shoot no. my gun. Everyone, look. That no, house God. is a fucking gun. Totally forgetting that he had the power of chaos control that could teleport him literally anywhere within the known universe. Shadow has pulled out his gun, dispersing the crowd into a frenzy. Tom York accepting his fate, and it's probably the best outcome that he could have for the next 10 years, ending his career on a somewhat high, embraces the opportunity to call out Shadow on stage, calling him a pussy that he wouldn't actually do it. Hey, I'm Tom York, and you're a pussy. You wouldn't actually do it. Hey, I'll show you. I'll show all of you. Shadow, I knew, I knew this was a bad idea. No, I knew this was a bad idea. I don't like anything, especially fucking. Oh, I'm sorry to swear, but like music festivals, man, it's all just people happy and being cheery and having a good time and like wearing like inappropriate like, like Native American wear and shit. I don't like it. I'm sorry I swore again. I'm Shadow the Hedgehog and I have a gun and a motorcycle. Take this time, York. Luigi, quickly, throw a magic oh, mushroom at Shadow before he shoots my favorite guy, Tom York. I don't give a shit. I don't know, Mario. Your fucking friends suck. These two fucking mice are weird. Don't Just tell me how to think. I beat you in the fucking Rio Olympics, Luigi. You little shit. Luigi, you gonna but take that? Was... You gonna take that from a mouse? But it Look. was too late. I guess so. <laughs> it was too late. Shadow the Hedgehog unloads his full clip into Tom York's chest as he tries to whisper out the final words of the song Creep. I fucking hate it. Hi guys, my name's Tom York again. I'm fucking dying. I really hate playing Creep on stage, but it's the only song that everyone at Coachella knows. Um, yeah, okay, I'm. <laughs> we get home. <sighs> And with that, Tom York escaped his last breath. Oh my, oh my, oh my gosh. I am doubly mad in that, that Shadow the Hedgehog, uh, by the way, it's a me, Mario. Uh, Shadow the Hedgehog has killed Tom York, my favorite singer. And also, I'm mad that Tom York was trying to sing Creep, which I thought that was a, a, a song by that guy that married Gwen Stefani. But I'm not 100% on that. Uh, Mario, you fucking borrowed my Radiohead cassette, like, four years after I got it. You still have it. How do you not know that that's Gavin Rosdale and Tom York is Tom York? It's clearly Bush and Radiohead. It's two different. We'll talk about this when we get Wait, back home. so who's Brooklyn. son creep? Was it, was it Radiohead or was it Bush? No, it was Radiohead. It was Radiohead. Mario! Yeah, listen, it's from the Bends. It's the album that, was it called The Bends? I think that was it. Oh, Wow, Mario. you know what? For these last six or seven years that I've been listening to music, I thought that Bush was Radiohead. I actually don't like Radiohead. I, I think I like Bush. Uh, who doesn't? But listen, right now, we got to get the fuck out of here. He shot Tom York, and look, 
that taxi cab wait no that's not a taxi cab it's an uber oh no it's not even an uber it's a lift guys come on we have no choice jump in this lift with me let's go I oh got, race you guys i'll just leave my motorcycle here i'll get in the lift with you guys it's fine all right I'm going to get in the so, lift, but Luigi, I'm going to need you to explain to me what songs Bush actually sang then. I'll tell you on the way, but first, Lyft driver, can you take us to the airport? Yeah, sure. Let's get out of here. Coachella blows. Yeah, that. Coachella suck. And with that, they all hopped in the lift, opting to fair split as every single one of them was a cheapskate. At the last second, Luigi refused to, check, to chip in. Arriving nice. at the airport, they boarded the plane and prepared to take off. Oh shit, we're trying to get on this plane. I forgot, I've still got this bag of magic mushrooms. Shadow, do you still have your fucking gun, man? No, I mean, I, I, I left that on this. I left that at Coachella, man. You think I'm just gonna carry that around with me after I shot a famous singer in the head? I mean, okay, what, good, good. Uh, by the way, what was your problem? Why wouldn't you even chip in? It was seriously like $5 for you to chip Listen, in for that ride. I don't I don't want to get into it, but like I'm just going through a lot right now and it was my idea to get us out of there and you fucking shot. I like Radiohead personally and I don't care what Ryan says. I mean Bush is a <laughs> fuck. Who's Ray? Right, who's right, I'm it. sorry. Let me remind you. Broken. <laughs> let it's a me That's Mario. A character authentic e ends when you break character. <laughs> Ryan, fuck, fuck you for liking Radiohead post kid X. <laughs> I don't actually wait. Are bring we, it are back. We done bring it back. No, bring it back. Bring it back. Like bring it back. All right. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Bring it back. Uh, quick. All right. Everyone. Sonic. Shadow. Luigi. We've got to eat all these magic mushrooms before we get onto the plane. Sonic, you go first. All right, guys. Let's take these mushrooms. I love tripping when I'm flying. Gotta go crazy. I wow. Can't. If I... uh, that's what I'm going to sound like on these things, just give me a double dose, man. All right. You know, you, hey, uh, Luigi, we're brothers, and we have been doing these drugs for a long time. And I know we've built up a resistance, so why don't you and I uh, just, like, eat half the, more than half the bag and leave the rest for Shadow? All right. Yeah, Shadow can have, like whatever's left i just i want this to turn into like every 13 year old's youtube video like our announcer was saying as fast as possible let's get let's take these mushrooms and let's trip yeah yeah and then let's record it on our cell phones for newgrounds.com i've yeah. never i've never really done anything like this before you know i'm not that not really good at letting go I mean, Sonic will attest pussy, to that. Man. Come on, man, live a little. I don't know. I'm just afraid of like not coming back all the way. You know, like. Well, you're not here already, so why not go a little further? Just let go, man. What are you afraid of? You just killed the singer on stage at Coachella. Yeah, that was pretty cool. You did just commit a murder, Shadow. You got to lose. Come on, peer pressure, man. Everyone. Well, well Shadow. 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 No. Shadow. 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 No, you guys, no. No, no, I don't want to do it. Shadow. 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 You're going to eat that fucking mushroom and you're going to like it. Okay, Open fine. his mouth. I'm going to eat it now. All right, I'm, no. I'm, grabbing, I'm grabbing Shadow behind the waist. You guys, I got his arms. Get I, his mouth open. I changed my mind again. I don't want to do this. No, put it in. Shadow. Choice, Mario. Shadow down. Here you go. Ah. Sh shove it down his mouth, Sonic. Yeah, make sure you chew it 22 times. Suck Walking on. down Shadow's body, he felt the mushrooms enter his system along sensually with a few of Sonic's fingers. As it entered his system, it was near instantaneous in its strength, and, that, and before he knew it, Shadow was high as far. <sighs> Oh my god, I can't believe those kicked in so well. So it means so quick. What's going on? Sonic, you were putting those fingers down my throat. Maybe I could fit the rest of you down me as well. That's for another time. Sonic takes off his gloves and essentially caresses Shadow's chest. <laughs> I guess it's right Whoa. now. I think it's for this time, Mario. Are you watching this? Yeah, I dude. I'm, I I'm filming all of this for later. Yeah, we need blackmail. Film these two weirdos. I wait, 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 unbuckles wait, wait. his overalls and sits at the back of the plane, making sure that he gets as much leg space as possible so he may witness the event that's about to occur. 
Hey, I'm going to man spread out here and just make sure I see all of this. On. I'm going to film all of it because uh, I just want to have this later for my own personal use. I'm, I don't know about blackmail, but definitely I need this for, for me for later when I get back to the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, good thinking, Mario. I'm going to do a, a Facebook Live. That seems to be the way to uh, broadcast most crimes nowadays. That's, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, put it on Facebook Live. They'll never find you. I'm streaming. I can't believe that Sonic is doing this to Shadow. Cameras fixed. Sonic presses his arsehole against Shadow's arm and begins to space stalk, shitting one, one long post pinger log into sh into Shadow's central, in fact, quite cavernous behind. <laughs> I thought I was gonna eat. I thought I was gonna eat Sonic, but okay. I guess we're doing this now. You know, the, the head of the high, you just gotta go with the flow, I guess. That's what my mom always taught me. Alright. <laughs> I've, I've always wanted to do this. I'm so excited to be shitting back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> the go Flushing back and forth. He realized that due to Shadow's poor genetics <laughs> and being made as the ultimate life form, that their gut bacteria were in fact not compatible. A discovery that was recently made within the last eight years within the medical field. With his gut flora, with his toxic manufactured gut flora infecting Sonic's bowels, Sonic began to expand rapidly like a balloon. Hey, what's happening to me? I'm getting bigger! Holy I'm shit, big. Mario, are you filming this? Dude, I'm getting all of this, and also, uh, um, secretly, I've put a towel over my lap because I am jerking off on this plane, and no one can see it. Dude, oh, you got a rod that is not going to quit, Mario. Okay, well, I'm going to film some of this as well. I don't know what to cut back and forth to. Um, but, whoa, whoa! Sonic is fucking e about to explode. Guys, Sonic so that the air pressure expanding Sonic's dong into one final orgasmic climax until an explosion that rocked the plane. Guys, help me! No, you wanted this. You're getting it. I'm gonna fill you with everything I got. Oh, oh God. I, Luigi, I've just realized we're in a pressurized airplane, and if Sonic explodes, it will blow up a side of the plane, crashing our plane, and we might all die. Holy shit. You're right. We better run to the front of this plane, grab the two parachutes off of the pilots. Let's, let's Then we'll just jump out. Okay, we won't do that last step. We'll just jump out the plane, Mario. Are you with me? No. Alright, guys. I, I Fuck it. Everyone explodes. Uh, shit goes everywhere. Everybody dies. I gotta fucking go. My, my, I, gotta, I gotta roll no, the No, 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 no. Mario and Luigi live because we jumped off the airplane. <laughs> no, fuck that. Fuck that. You're dead and covered in shit. Yeah, we're we're all dead and covered in shit. What like the inter inter what, what's the term? Interbacterial therapy? What, what's it called? Uh, That's the one. Uh, yeah. Fecal yeah. transplant. I gotta, yeah, right, fecal right, transplant. I, I gotta roll. I, I gotta go to soccer. Alright, Bye, soccer. Yeah. Go play some FIFA for real. I love you. Love you. Love, love you, my ball. brother. Love you too. Goodbye. I, I can't Goodbye wait till too. somebody makes the animated version on YouTube. That's oh. gonna be Alright. See you later, man. Jake. Shouts out. Bad. Bye. You have so much editing to do, Jake. Oh, yeah. But you know what? It's been six months. Yeah, six months worth. <laughs> we do it for the okay. videos. But for real, what band sings Creep? That's Ra Radiohead. That's that's Radiohead. It's Radiohead. Oh, I thought I hate I thought I didn't like Radiohead. He hates playing that song though, because that's like their first hit. I, I, that's not my favorite song. But it's like, oh, that's a good song. It's like Beastie yeah. Boys and Fight Fear, right? So then, what yeah. did Bush sing? Uh, Machine uh, Head. I don't want to come back down. Or song, uh, yeah, yeah, come down. Song uh, two. Greedy Fly. Of shit. Dude, a song, bunch of shit you both care about. Song two. That's true. Oh wait, no, is that Bush or Blur? That was Blur. That's Blur. Yeah. Blur this sounds song like two. a bunch of shit that I don't care about. No, yeah. no, because you aren't 13 years old. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, when I was 13 year years old, I was listening exclusively to Blink-182, uh, Limp Biscuit, and Weird Al Yankovic. That's pretty cool. Shuts up. I was listening to Slipknot and Korn and Limp Biscuit. Hell yeah, fucking we Korn. Well, Weird Al was really good on that uh, comedy Bang Bang. Yeah, he was. I like. I really, I really ever listen to that when Jason Mendes is on it. 
Um, who's Jake? It's, uh, well, I, I'm talking about the show, the IFC show. I yeah. used to listen to the podcast. Yeah, the IFC show is really cool. I don't listen to the podcast at all. I love the show. Yeah, I used to years ago, and uh, it's different now. Yeah, I've I've seen a couple episodes. That's a pretty good show. It's on like one on on Netflix. Like if it's like I got yeah. nothing else to watch, I'll, I'll watch an episode. I it's watched cool. a bunch it's... of season one, but like the Weird Al coming in for Reggie Watts, I wanted to check some of those out. So I just watched like a few of the later season, and it was good. Still good. Cool. I'll check it out. Definitely good shit. Uh, video games. Hey, can I talk about some video games? Yes, of course. I wanted to talk about some video games really quick because uh, this month I've played both one of the greatest games I've ever played and possibly the worst game I've ever played. Oh my goodness. Uh, Because I'm going to, I'll quickly just say the best game. I played Persona 5. It's great. I don't really need to like go on and on about it. If you like Persona, play Persona. It's, I put 115 hours into it. It's dripping style. It's great. Um... I have the Japanese but, CD soundtrack, but I haven't bought or played or played the game yet. But I like the soundtrack. Really good. There's a lot of like cool jazz music. Like when you're doing heists, this really cool jazz song comes in, and then you steal hearts. Um, and while that game is a great game based around its style, one of the worst games I've ever played because of its style is uh, I played David Jaffe's new game, Drawn to Death, because it was oh, free on PS Plus. It's fucking yeah. terrible. Wow, really? Uh, really? Okay, so. Mechanic gameplay wise, it's <laughs> basically just a four player uh, arena shooter and it's whatever, it's okay. But the style that they went with is you're you're playing like some edgy ninth graders like you know, like his notebook that he's like drawing in during class. Like every time the game opens, it opens in live action film of some you know, in first person you're watching some guy teach like a math class or something and then it goes to the book. And once you get in there, the humor and style of this game is so fucking just god awful and terrible that mm. I played it. I was talking to Jake last night while I was playing it, and Jake can attest. Every five minutes, I was like, just say, just groaning, just what the fuck well, is this? From what from what you put across to me, the entire game is memes. The entire Ooh. game is memes. Um, so, uh, what happens is uh, there's this announcer who's always kind of yelling and he's screaming like. Wow, you're, you're a piece of shit, and you just killed that guy, and it gave me a rock-hard boner. Uh, and then when you kill someone, uh, it flashes on screen, and you can buy these with money, uh, like, gifts of of memes, of like, uh, yo, this baby shit's better than you play video games. Or, like, in that impact font, it's some kid making a face, like a weird, like, dramatic face, and going, I killed your face! Or, you know, just shit like that, and it's non-stop <laughs> that. Oh, nice. uh, well, I, I, I'm you, just I'm just uh, glad that for a change, a game is, like, instead of taking time, like, like extra time in its development schedule to, like, add memes as an afterthought, or, like, adding oh, memes as patches, memes. The- like, they're actually, like, the memes have been there from the get-go, and I think that's really important. But you can pay extra money for more memes. Since no. it's a free-to-play game, you can buy mystery boxes that have new memes in them. Ooh, premium. <laughs> and welcome to the title of this episode, premium. <laughs> um, God. No, the best uh, like example I can give is I played the tutorial, you know, to learn how to play the game, and the tutorial is taught to you by Mr. Frog, who looks like that Pepe the Frog meme. And you, Uh-oh. you know, it's all this dumb shit. And at the end of it, he goes, "Hey, you did a really good job. Now go play the game while I masturbate, watching you furiously." Uh oh. So that's that's, that's drawn to death. Uh, I never want to play it again. It's free, and you couldn't make me play it. You, you shouldn't play it. How many memes did you buy? I bought zero memes. That's a good amount. Yeah, I thought that was a good amount. So. My my hey my recommendation for all y'all this episode do play Persona Five do not play Drawn to Death one of these games is sixty dollars <laughs> one of these games is free play the one that costs sixty dollars <laughs> go figure uh, Garrett my friend I love you so much what do you think about the video games what do you think hello my boy you know I've been known to play some video games. Um, and I gotta say, the only kind of current game I'm playing is Zelda. Uh, Breath of the Wild is uh, piqued my interest in a way that Metal Gear Solid Five did. Um, so I've just been going through like 
uh, mainly shrine quests. Haven't really done much of the story yet, but just building the character up, like exploring the map. I've almost got the whole world map unlocked, all the towers and everything uh, visited. Um, I've put a lot of time into the game too, which is something that I don't, don't really do with a lot of games nowadays. But uh, yeah, I mean, what else can be said? It's been out for quite a little while at this point. Um, and I'm playing on the Wii U as well. I'm not using the Switch. It's that rare version. But uh, yeah, that rare Wii U disc. Um, Shuts out. Really like that game though, man. I mean, uh, the costumes, uh, the ability to like dye the costumes and customize the character and all the little like side quest stuff is all attainable whereas maybe in other zelda games i felt like it wasn't this it clicks with me in a way that recent zeldas haven't for a long time shuts up yeah yeah i don't i don't have that switch yet i don't know when or if i'm gonna get a switch i'm spending a lot of time at the moment like actually auctioning off or selling a lot of my like older games at the moment because i've just got this huge collection i've been sitting on for so many years now and in my heavy collecting days, most of which were like before Gaming Cult and maybe the first two years of Gaming Cult, I'd say I like, yeah, I still haven't played 80% of the games that I bought. Mm -hmm. I was one of those collectors. So I've been selling my stuff again. I figure I'm going to focus more on new stuff. Uh, but saying that, I am playing a PS3 game. I'm still playing Yakuza 5. <laughs> Wait, oh, nice. really quick, oh, nice. quick, Jake, can we just confirm, do you still own Cat Boss? Confirmed. I I will never fucking part with Sukaban Shachorena, the the, the Nintendo Wii game that sold a hundred copies, where a cat is your boss and you have to appease your boss cat by playing piano with it. Thank you. Okay, just just making sure. Sorry. It's the lowest selling video game of all time. But uh, the highest in your collection. Oh yeah, it's like on the podium, right? It's right there next to like my signed my my copy of Shenmue signed by Lil B. It's, it's, <laughs> it's right there. Thank you, Base God. Oh, you know what? I had a personal video game recommendation very recently from Lil B himself. Uh, oh, shouts out. He recommended that Shout I... Shouts out, Lil B. Shouts out. Uh, Lil B, Lil Boss. That's right. Finest motherfucker alive. Pack. Um, he recommended that I play a game called Abzu on PS4. Oh, oh yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I've heard that's pretty good. He said it was very relaxing, open world, unwater game, endless relaxation. Huh. Mm. And you know what? He was right. It's from the same art developer of Journey and Flower. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah. So it's not, a, right. it's not a game by that game company, but it's the same art director. And okay. Oh my god, the game is fucking incredible. And I can't. It came out last year, and I can't believe I, it, like completely passed under my radar and it took like the base god himself to bring that to light but it's what, what kind of game is it what do you do it is imagine like journey or flower but underwater with an amazing story lots of emotions an amazing like orchestral soundtrack that's dynamic to its environment and like it's some, just a really emotional beautiful game that takes place underwater it's not a long game i recommend that everybody play it everybody go and play abzu that's a b z u on the on, P the on psn what kind of mechanics was it was it kind of like the journey or 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 flower game where it was more of a uh you it's... know um environmentally based game or is it like a I, I just kind of want to get an idea for what kind of game it is because i saw a bunch of stuff about it and it looked really really cool but i couldn't get a sense for what the gameplay was and there wasn't like a, a, a good trailer to explain it so like what kind of gameplay is it? I, I guess is what I'm what I'm asking. So it's um it's a bit more close. It's a it's very much environment based and interacting with the environment. Uh, you're always moving, but you you're not moving automatically like in Flower. I'd say the control style and gameplay style is very very similar to well, it's pretty much identical to Journey. Oh okay. Oh that's I'll cool. Play that. Yeah. I like Journey. 
uh, I'd say everybody play this game. I played it from start to finish. I felt lots of different emotions, and that's really cool. It's a really beautiful game. Like, I yeah, everybody should play Absu. It's great. It's almost cool, like that, uh, that, that, cool. that first game, Flow, had a very like uh, underwater look, like microbial kind of like uh, uh, look to it. Does it, it's almost like a mix of that. It sounds like that and jer- like his first game and his last game. Well, it's it's you're you're underwater, like you're exploring an underwater world and like releasing different species of fish. But there's a driving like plot and storyline through the whole thing, and like. Un- 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 you're uncovering like like antiquity of the area as well like ancient like tales of how the land came to the underwater land like world came to be and like the robotics all around it as well and like the, the current peril that the world's in reveals itself over time through the game and there's a spiritual element to it as well like so good absolutely was really really good everyone should play it um so yeah thank you base god for that recommendation it's it was really good uh thank you base god i've been playing yakuza 5 again i finished after finishing final fantasy 15 i I played that for a good for a long while after uh and also a lot of final fantasy 14 as well all the new patch content that's been coming out sort of post heavensward um but now that's all drawn. That's recently now just drawn to a close. All the patch content, and now everyone's just sort of waiting for uh, the new expansion, Stormblood, to come along. Um, big shouts out to the WWE for doing that uh, Final Fantasy Stormblood New Day crossover. <laughs> that, was, Hell yeah. that was great. <laughs> yeah, New Day decked out in like moguls and like yeah, and Michael Cole said Google at WrestleMania. I know it was yeah. awesome. <laughs> Jeez, it's come so far. So yeah, I really enjoyed all the Heavenswood patch content. I'm really looking forward to to Stormblood um, when that comes out in like June, I think. June, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm back to playing a PS3 game that I've been that I was, I've been waiting five years for. It came out in 2012 in Japan and it came out the end of 2015. No, 2016 it came out. Or the like very end of 2015 or the start of 2016. It, <laughs> it finally came out in in, in like English Western territories. Don't feel I bad. Some of the most Go don't ahead. feel bad. Some of the most uh, fun I've had playing games recently is on the PPS. I've been playing PS2 like Tony Hawk Pro Skaters, and those are so fucking fun. I had forgotten like Tony Hawk Three is just uh, like muscle memory came instantly back and I was grinding uh, and manualing my way to high scores. Hell yeah. You got that game shot going? Endless endless Dude, grinding? I got... Uh, action, I balance. talked about that. How I used to how I used to put on the the action replay code for uh, endless... Uh, or it was a perfect grail balance. And Hell then yeah. I would just get the high score super easily. Just grinding in a pool in a circle. Yeah. Perfect grail balance. Those are so much fun though. Yeah, it's so much fun, man. It's uh, it's something de- to hours into those games. There, there's something I, to being older now and being very content with my gaming collection that exists, and being like, you know, I'll play the outliers when something like a new Zelda came along. Uh, but in all honesty, it's like, eh, I'm I'm totally cool playing. <laughs> I'll keep playing Metal Gear Five forever. I got 300 hours in that game. <laughs> Shouts out, holy Lord, shit. Well. Shout out, yeah, Lillian. Yeah, I checked. I checked my MGS5 before we started recording. I was playing, uh, and I'm at 300 hours now. Have you 100 wow. of that game yet? Crazy. N- no, not 100 uh, percent. Because that's like mission tasks. That's what I'm doing now. Going through and getting all mission tasks and rank S uh, for the missions for the main story missions. Everything else is done, and there's only a few of those left. I'm at, like, whatever, I think it's, like, 89, something something close to 90%. Nice. Man, for me, like, the f- the past two years, I've mostly just been playing Final Fantasy fourteen and playing little bits of other yeah. games, like, on the side of that. Like, I've played a little bit of The Last Guardian as well. Uh, that game's really oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Um... And yeah, shit. I mean, I started I started playing Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE 
as well on the Wii U for a while, and that game was really fun. But now that Persona 5's come out, I don't know if I'll go back to that or not, because it's a very similar to Persona. Shin Megami Tensei kind of game. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying video games again right now. It's good. I just I just had my new album come out as well. Um, so I've been, oh yeah. I've been balancing the music thing with the video game thing as well. And, you know, regular real life shit, which gets in the way for everybody, of course. Um, I do have my new album out now, Spirit. Go get it. DJ Innes Spirit. It's available on iTunes, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, uh, Google Play, all digital platforms. So go check that out. Shouts out. If you like. Yeah, congratulations, oh, yeah. man. Congrats. 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 Yeah. What's the best, what's the most, what's, what's the most preferred uh, download for you? For wh- What do you see the most cut of? Uh, I would see the most cut out of probably the Holstead Street Entertainment Bandcamp or uh, iTunes purchase. iTunes, really? Yeah. Okay. Bandcamp. But but uh, iTunes as well, I'd say. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Hell yeah, man. That's That's pretty cool. I'm real proud of you for doing that. Thank you, my friend. Hell yeah. I know it's a lot of hard work, so it's it's cool. I know you've been working on a, a lot of is. stuff for a while, so for you to actually put something down and, and get it out there, that's a lot of people talk about it, not a lot of people do it. So that I always have a lot of appreciation for that. Thank you, man. Thank you. I, I, it, it's, it sounds weird to talk about like in, wo- <laughs> in words because it's music, and that's where I put everything. It's where I put all my energy into is the music, but like... Yeah, I put everything into that music, oh. and it, sa- it sounds weird hey, to say up? that in words. What's up? Um, sorry, the I'm at my office. The cleaning guy just walked in. I'll be right back. <laughs> Shouts out. Shouts out. Uh, sorry, Jake, you were saying very hurtful. <laughs> Salamanca cleaner. Hey, it would they do a great <laughs> job. Always taking out the trash. <laughs> it wouldn't oh, be. It God. wouldn't be. It wouldn't be Doctor Ryan being on an episode of Gaming Cult without something like that happening. Oh my god, that's great. Um, my boy, I love you. Um, yeah, shit, I don't know. I've been, I've been like, I, I know more of my attention has gone on my music viewers, like, in the last year or two. But I, I, I've been doing the show for, like, five years now, but I've been making music and DJing for over 20 years. So it's like, we're, I, I, I'm trying my best to find the balance, but I, I had to put some more, like, attention into my music for the past year. And uh, I regret that, that that's made the the show obviously not have an episode in six months. But you know, it's uh, I needed to do it, and that's 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 yeah. what happened. Also, we had really bad technical issues for like for for six months as well. And I've been trying to fix technical issues for six months, and that was a pain in the ass. But here we are. It's video yep. games. It's video games. Yeah, I just wanted to say I thought it was funny that Jake, you've talking about how you've just been playing uh, like Final Fantasy fourteen and fifteen, and Garrett, you've put three hundred hours into like one game. Uh, whereas <laughs> me, since the beginning of this year, I've gotten the platinum trophy in twenty four games. Jeez, you've gone like way into like, PlayStation four. You've been like you've gone completely into getting trophies now, haven't you? I was big into getting achievements back in the day when that, that first started until I went through the whole, and we've explained it on here, but the whole me getting my account stolen by some dude in Russia. And it oh, made me yeah. like really, it made me really down on the whole achievement thing because I was like, oh, this could be gone on any second. And then I started playing WoW with some friends again, and they had an achievement system. So I got it big into that. Then I realized WoW's a bad game. I'm not going to play this anymore. And then you guys got me into Final Fantasy 14, and I got really into those achievements. And then I was like, I don't want to play an MMO anymore. This is the same game. And so sometime at the beginning of this year, I just started, all these video games started coming out because this year there's been a shit ton of video games. And uh, between really, that and it's like really been the free year, games on, it? yeah, between all the cool games that have been coming out and like all the free games on PSN and the flash deals, I've just been running through a cool mix of new games that come out, games, you know, weird, funny games that, uh, I played back in the day, I haven't played a while, and then, like, this really, like, I've been on this kick of playing these PS2 games that they've remastered and put trophies into, like, I I recently played Bully and Mark of Cree, which are, like, two of the games that I used to play all the time on PS2 back in the day, wow. so, I don't know, it's kind of fun, it's like, playing one game for 300 hours, I understand how that can be fun, like, I've definitely put that or more into i think my time played in wow was close to two years of full time uh but playing a bunch of little games or a bunch of games you know for this game's 10 hours this game's 15 hours there's something really fun about that of just like jumping 
from game to game to game. Like, Brian, didn't you say you've been playing a whole bunch of different games? Uh, I mean, I've been playing a couple. I always, I always kind of bounce around. Um, and then every so often, one game will stick with me. Uh, so, I, like, I got, I got Breath of the Wild on the Switch, so I've been playing the hell out of that game. And, and that's been the game that I've been, like, stuck on for a little bit. But uh, before that, I was playing Gravity Rush. I was playing uh, Last Guardian. I had the new uh, Tomb Raider, Rise of Tomb Raider. I was playing that. Uh, I downloaded I download a bunch of stuff. There's always, like, deals and hidden stuff on PSN if you just kind of, like, look around. And, and you'll see, like, yeah. a game. It, it's not promoted anywhere. It's just, oh, this game's on discount. And it's not a game you've ever heard of. Like, I found a, this game called... Uh, called the swapper that way i think i might have talked about it on the show um it's like, what, like uh, it's like what sonic and shadow just did yeah basically <laughs> um because yeah somebody ends up dead uh but yeah like so i i find games like that and there have been a lot of small like releases too that uh, that have been good i i played doom um i don't finish a lot of games as much as i used to i find that i just kind of like play a game out and then once it stops being fun, I'm I'm okay with just turning it off. I don't feel like I need to complete it because for me, like, the fun shouldn't be forced. And I feel like a lot of games kind of, like, run out of steam. So rather than get sour on a game, I just stop and then maybe I'll come back to it later. But most of the times, I don't. But See, it, that, that's I always have funny experience. I was going to say, that's funny because I do the exact opposite where I'll get mad at a game and it's more like, fuck you, I'm going to beat you and I'm going to show you that I'm better than you. <laughs> right. Determination. Um, and, and I Sorta. think the I, I, I think this will be Brian, have you ever played any of the Dark Souls games? Yeah, I have. Have you well, beat I them? I played Bloodborne. Okay. I played I Bloodborne think... and I and I probably talked about it here as well, but I remember just appreciating the game for what it does, but not being interested at all in learning how to play a game that for me what makes it for others what makes it appealing for me is a chore and that is not why i play video games yeah so it's it's not it's not it's not me discounting why it's fun for other people it's just what what makes it fun for other people doesn't appeal to me and i tried the same thing with like the fallout series or skyrim it's like i try and i appreciate what makes it so cool but it doesn't capture my attention in that way and I play video games to have fun. So if I'm not having fun or if I have to like dig really deep to find fun in a game, I'm like, it, be- it better have something else to support it for me to want to dig deeper in it. You know what I mean? Like a good story or a great presentation. Because I've played broken games that have like a great story or great, you know, visuals. Absolutely. But the, but the gameplay is like, wow, this is, yeah, this is definitely bad. Yeah, I think that makes you a better person than me because I will play a game until it's basically like I'm hate fucking a game where <laughs> I'm playing it solely Dude. to beat it, and then my favorite part of that game is deleting it off my hard drive as I flip off my TV. Dude, you were literally <laughs> yesterday. I was talking to you on PSN, and you were re-downloading fucking Watch Dogs Two because they they just patched it to add two new trophies. These oh, fuckers. Man. These Ubisoft motherfucks put out two new DLC patches with only one silver trophy each. So I got to go through all the trouble of fucking downloading this game because now my 100% is only a 96%. And that fucking pisses me off. And that's why I kill all the dogs in Ubisoft games. (laughs) That and because some Kotaku chick said that if you uh, kill all the dogs in the division, you're racist. I was like, fuck you. I'm going to kill all the dogs in division just to fuck with you. (laughs) You got a you got a very like spiteful outlook. Man. I'm very spiteful. Like you got to let go of some of this shit. Probably. <laughs> no, you're Brian. Slightly. No, dogs are not a race, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't even care about the dogs. I just want. I like. I want Ryan to like just chill. <laughs> I think it comes from the fact that all of my friends live you know a thousand miles away. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah. you know after. I live in a small little town in Southern Oregon. I have a couple friends who I, you know, we hang out every yeah. once in a while. But most of my friends in high school moved away. Yeah. So, we what I what visit. do I do? 
I, I am coming and visiting soon, hopefully. But uh, I said, we, we need to come visit, and we need to take yeah, away your true. monster energy drinks, and we need to calm you down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we'll get you on those five yeah. hours. It's like less it's less intake, but like the same amount of energy. And you can just download ten of those. On. <laughs> you can just Bottom. down ten of those in a row on the way back from the gas station. Hey. Bottoms up, and I, the devil laughs. I gotta <laughs> Listen, that's this is the plan, Jake. You spend 16 hours on a plane, yeah. you get your ass over here. It's then all hour. three of us will get 16 hours in a car and drive up to Oregon, and we're gonna take his Monster Energy drinks and get him to chill. You know what? Yeah. It's gonna be Go more out. of a 30 hour flight <laughs> oh. altogether to get to Southern Oregon from Melbourne. But you know what? It's... Oh yeah, you might as well just go there. We'll meet, we'll meet you at the airport. Sure. <laughs> Don't. Hey, just a tip out there to all the viewers: don't don't ever come to Southern Oregon. This place is lame. <laughs> no, just don't come here. All we've got here's here's all we have in Southern Oregon: uh, old people, uh, pears, and just racism. You got a Dairy Queen? And a pretty good doctor. I thought everyone was going to Oregon for the weed, man. That's okay. So. Is that's only Portland or what? Is it one of it's, the states? Yeah, you you need to go to like Portland. You need to go to Eugene. You got to. So everyone thinks of of Oregon as this blue hippie state, but it's really Portland and Eugene because that's where the colleges are, and a little bit Ashland, which is south of us. The rest of Oregon is hardcore red state, good old boys. Ah, uh, so it's like Texas and Austin, that whole thing. It's, yeah, no, it's like it's like California. Oh. Yes, it's like California. Whereas True. Portland is like L.A., San Diego. I'm living in fucking Fresno. Oh well, maybe fuck. maybe it's just like cities and. Uh, I'm in Bakersfield. No, I'm in Stockton, motherfucker. Because I get, I, I bet it gets a little racist out uh, farther from the cities, right, Jake? When you get a little further into oh, the you, bush, you have to go slightly outside any of the major cities, or maybe even in the major cities on any mode of public transportation to see racism here. It's yeah, maybe it's just a population it's, density it's, thing. It, no, it's just. It's just white supremacy, dude. <laughs> it's just can, Austra can I, Australia's can I, fucked. <laughs> can I tell a cool racism story? Is that allowed? <laughs> is, is it a yes. racist story or no. is it a racist? No, well, it's racist against me. It. It's racist against me. Oh yeah, that's hot right now. I want to hear it. Okay, look. So uh, I knew this kid. He's definitely not listening to this, so I will call him by name. Uh, this kid in high school, his name was Seth, uh, and he was okay. like, we never hung out, but like in class we talk or you know, like you know. We were one of the, you know those friends where you had where it's like you never talked to them outside of school, but at school it was like, hey Seth, what's up? Blah blah blah. Um, and so that was you know I knew him through four years. We had a bunch of classes together. Nice guy. And on the last day of senior year, he comes up to me and he says, hey Ryan, uh, hey I'm going to college in Utah. I don't know if I'm moving back here. I'll got you a present. I was like, oh man, that's so nice of you. I didn't even think to do that. And he's like, don't worry about it. So he leaves and I open this up and it's a book of Mormon. Nice. And it, okay. he wrote inside of it, Dear Ryan, I want you to have this because I'm pretty sure you and your family are going to hell if you don't convert. <laughs> That's fucking cool. Oh, no. He, okay. Yikes. Holy That's shit. very uh, anti-Semitic. Uh, is super anti-Semitic. And I've never done this before, but it was the one and only time in my life I've ever burned a book. Oh, there you go. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. so, well, you that's the kind of town I lived in. John wow. Smith would forgive you. It's okay. So don't come to Southern Oregon. Yeah. And Seth, if you're out there, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I would say definitely come to Australia, because, like, Australia is cool as fuck, but there's also, like, a there's a hard right here that's, like... Yeah. Like, like the real hard right. I'm talking, like, the real, real hard right, and it fucking sucks. Um, I, yeah. Well, it's out showing its face in America now too, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's everywhere. Well, the uneducated have a voice. That's that's kind of what it is. Yeah, um, you know, with with social media and everything, like anybody could have a million eyes on them in the next two seconds, at it, like in any moment. So, like I don't know, there's that kind of compulsion to to want to put your message out there, and and like. I think people who have a little bit more restraint or are more thoughtful and critical or more educated and aware of themselves don't just put whatever out there or they think about what they're giving up for that fame or that attention, whatever you want to call it. Mm. But then there's people who don't have education, have never been 
like you know exposed to much what for whatever reason whatever resources they lacked and they they're just you know they just want something that they don't have and tv is there to fill a void because it shows you an ideal picture or media in general so i know i'm kind of like going on a weird tangent but i think that that's kind of like there's always that in every in every place where there is an edu- like a good level of education for for your people and uh and and we're seeing it louder now than ever because the access to it isn't that hard is yeah. to bring it all and back and it's a an- anonymity too man people can There's just that hide behind the twitter avatar yeah delete your twitter if people are upset with you or you know whatever like you can you can be anybody you can be several people if you want and uh, I'm a I'm dragon. I'm a dragon kin. Yeah, we've we've said our personas before. Yeah, I think. Have we? Yeah. I, I, oh, definitely. We we've, I def- don't, we've definitely been I don't there think with. I the was f- there for that episode. With the, we've definitely been there with our first sonas. I was um, I was like a, a I was a dragon, and I was definitely some kind of dragon kin, or yeah. I, I think at one point I was maybe like a red fox as well, or a red a red mm. panda. That's what it was. Shit. Nice. Mm-hmm. Really quickly, I wasn't on that episode. Will you give me a fursona? Well, you got to pick your own fursona, you Ryan. Look, I mean, this, this you identity is... Oh, I thought no it was like a nickname shows. where you're not allowed to pick your own. No. See, you oh. would think I chose like a black cat to be my fursona, but I as well, I think, went uh, dragonkin. I went with like um, kind of like one of those green reptilian uh, humanoid looks, like the, huh. uh, like the David Icke book covers, like Children of the Matrix okay. kind of stuff. Brian, what, what was what yours? It, I don't remember what I chose. Do you? Does I feel like Jake would remember, but uh, uh, it was a cat at one point. It was definitely like a cat of some kind, some kind of feline. How about, how about this, Brian? Because you don't remember, I'll make a pact with you. I'll let you pick mine if you let. There me was. Pick I'm, yours. I'm. I'm trying to think back to like fan oh. art that we were sent back in like 2013, of like of, yeah. all, of us all as like I was I, I was like a raccoon or a red panda holding a, a CD. Eric was a yeah. ba- Eric was a bat. Um, uh, I probably Cody was, was a weird snake kind of anime kind of thing. A snake saying anime. Uh, Garrett was wait wait wasn't wait wait Cody's persona was Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah, just Cody the Hedgehog. It was just Cody the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh, that yeah. was his persona. Was Cody the Hedgehog? <laughs> but okay, yeah, Brian. If you don't remember yours, would you like? I'll make like I'll make a deal with you. You can pick mine if I can pick yours. I feel like mine was maybe a bear or a polar bear or a right. monkey. I, oh, I, a polar I, bear. Speaking of polar bears, I heard you're doing a new uh, uh, podcast about Lost. Yeah, but we can keep finish this thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice attempt at a segue. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Give him a plug. Trying to help out a buddy. Oh no, no, it, not not that. I just didn't want to get on a tangent. Uh, okay. Real, anyway, well, yes, yeah. you're we a are on a tangent. <laughs> I I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> this whole show is a tangent. Yeah. That's, ah! <laughs> welcome yeah, to the keep, Gaming Cult Podcast. Keep, keep this whole part in because this part was great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like trying. Anyway. To, I'm trying to preserve the integrity of what. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I guess let's get back on topic. Why? I think it was. A... I mean, I guess if we're all picking, then can I can I be like a cool otter? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, like I like I like the beach and I like the waves and I think otters are like sort of that cool mix of like beach and sand and uh, surf mm-hmm. and uh, I like a cool otter wearing sunglasses. Do you lay on your back in? Uh in the water and then like break clams with your little otter feet and hands and then eat it no i eat nachos off my chest oh shit like at a con you lay down on the floor up yeah, against I, the wall and you eat nachos i go and i order nachos and then i sit down on the floor i take my shirt off and then at i pour convention. the nachos yeah on the floor at the convention center and i pour uh, the nacho cheese which i do let it Cool down a little bit. I don't want to burn myself, of course. Yeah, be no, safe, be safe my friend. I pour the cheese and the, and the chips on my chest, and then I right. just eat the nachos off my chest, like, and I scrape the cheese off my chest and eat it. Do you have, right. like, a, do, do, do you have like, a hairy like, chest? Yeah. Wait, wait. Say that again? That's not a hairy chest. I, it's okay. It's, it's a, I'd say it's a light hair. You know, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing too super hairy, but, you know, I've got a good, uh, good, uh, good growth. See, I wouldn't. He's I, in between me and Brian. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I would say if if uh, 
if Garrett's a zero and, and Brian's a ten, I'm like a solid four. Right I'm like a seven. <laughs> there are people way hairier than yeah. me. It's weird. I'm around. I, the, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm about. I'm about as hairy as Brian. I think I'm pretty hairy as well. I was but just not, not like scale, as not compared to what I have seen out there. Minimum. It's definitely. But yeah. Why don't you, uh, still just for fun, just because I wanted to see what you would have picked, why don't you uh, pick my persona? Uh, okay, let me think for a second. Everything I know about Brian. Brian is, okay, first of all, Brian's really cool. Oh, uh, nice. Brian is, uh, I like to think, is uh, full of excitement, so he'd be something kind of bright-eyed. I'd go with, like, a really awesome, like, excited, happy-to-be-here squirrel. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Like, a, hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Brian. I got a cheeks full of uh, acorns Nuts. or um, that's where he stores, like, all the cool Chernabog cups that we talk each other into <laughs> buying at Disneyland. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I just, I just think cool. Brian is, like, a really dope-ass, like, cool. He's a squirrel wearing a positive mental attitude shirt, and he's a straight-edge <laughs> squirrel. Oh, wow. And, like, That'd a hardcore show. He's like PMA all day. I'm a squirrel. What's up? That's but cool. he does. He's not actually straight edge. He just likes that attitude because he also is all about uh, cocaine. Yeah, because I'm the other way around. You're I'm like, not saying. I'm, I'm straight edge about like how hard I party. <laughs> like I don't. I don't break edge about partying really, really hard all the time. Like you have exactly. to have drugs every hour. No, like I have to have as much fun as possible at <laughs> like every moment of my life, because Brian that is one hundred percent. That is the truth. I'm. I'm. What I've just told you guys is one hundred percent the essence of of how I live my life and try to be. I one hundred percent of the time, the most fun I can have in any moment. At any given time, any moment I'm existing in, the most fun I can have. So a scroll makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. So that's <laughs> I, you know I, I don't want to override whatever was past canon, but when I see Brian, I think I think Andrew W K the squirrel. <laughs> wow. See that. White pants on a squirrel. He lives up in the rafters of uh, in Melbourne at the convention center of PAX Australia 2013. Yep, yeah. he's still there. Yeah. I forage, just like a squirrel. 100%. Somebody draw that. Somebody draw that and tweet it at Brian. Straight edge Brian squirrel. Uh, bear in mind, everyone who uh, who watches this podcast and sees the changes, I no longer have a beard. I just have a mustache. I still get pictures of me with beards. It's pretty interesting to get fan art, and that's like, man, I haven't had a beard in a year. Also, if anyone wants to draw me as an otter on the floor of a convention eating nachos off my chest, yeah. I will take that. Yeah, and draw me, like, behind a rock, like, peering to see when he passes out so that I can go and take the nachos that he doesn't eat. Cause wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Peering out from behind Dwayne Johnson? Yeah, like, like I'm behind the rock's shoe. Like and he's, like, he's got, like, some sick Adidas on or something. And yeah, because like, we're, might, we're me with we're my at Comic -Con. nachos. Does he have one eyebrow raised? He, he we're at Comic Con. He's there uh, to. He's okay, here's the scene. At, he's looking at an otter that's just eating nachos, so his eyebrow is raised to the to the ceiling. Oh shit! He's he's <laughs> like, raising the eyebrow because there's a guy. There's an otter laying on the floor in the Fast and the Furious Nine panel, eating nachos off his chest. Oh shit! And he's got the one eyebrow up, and behind him, awesome. You know, fun forever party squirrel bride is eyeing the nachos like, yo, I can get me some of them chips and cheese. Yeah, and then you, <laughs> and then there are two, there are two um, dragon gods that represent uh, the good, the fight between good and evil, and they're observing this, uh, this, you know, this scene. And that's, that's me and that's Jake. You, that's, okay. And we we won't say <laughs> which one's good and which one's evil. We'll let you, the artist, decide who that's represents pure good and who represents pure evil. So dope. Thank you, my friend. So, now, now, somebody draw that, please. <laughs> now, Garrett, I remember from past fan art that you were some kind of animal standing with a snout standing on two legs. Okay, a snouted two-legged beast, yeah. Yeah, uh, but as that's as much as I can remember, I say that we also give you, my friend, who I love so much, at the count of seven. Starting from seven, we give you a new one. And you fursona as well. Okay. 
Well, yeah, at the top of the segment, I wanted to, uh, I think, become like a dragonkin, much like the David Icke uh, uh, reptilian shapeshifter. But I, I would go with, with, yeah, let's shed off these scales and let's go <laughs> with some <laughs> move, move out from is the this core still, of the This earth? is new gaming cult for Sonus because this is still new gaming cult, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. Wait, this is just this is just the gaming cult podcast. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. New game this is called. Gaming Cult Classic. Yeah, you gaming, enjoy Gaming Cult Classic. You didn't know? I yeah. forgot. You have no so, idea. So okay, well then, yeah, in that case, call somebody. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll I'll go with a, a new persona. Well, I, would like I to mean, count down first. Count down from seven at six, five, four, three. Well, two, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you didn't. You you just started counting. You didn't say. And now from I'm gonna seven. Count. I for ooh, say I I'm see. gonna count from seven. My wife. And then you say seven again because you can't say the seven in the seven. Go nice. Ahead. You caught me there. I see it. I see it. Okay, here we go. Count sexy, down from seven. Sexy and time. Seven, six, five, nice. four, three, two, my wife, one. Um, I think my new persona is, it's going to be that of a, um, a German shepherd. I'm going to go, I'm going to blend in with the in crowd. I'm going to be a German shepherd. I'm going to have those, um, big paws, real big ones. Are we talking like anth anthropomorphic or? Like Mickey Mouse, uh, gloves that you would wear to a rave. Right. Yeah. Like. Those big nice. hands. Some candy like necklaces. Some candy five, bracelets as well. Well, yeah, I mean, that's part of my outfit. As a German shepherd, I wear uh, a male carrier, postal carrier's uniform. Typically. Well, wait a second. I think Brian asked a very important question, which is five yeah. fingers and four. Uh, ooh, pause with... These are so enormous and gigantic that there's only three oh. pa three pads. Oh, oh wow. There's okay. the there's the pad in the middle, and then you got three digits on these paws. Okay. okay. And big, baby. And I'm talking feet, too, and it's a little hard to walk, and I wear a mail carrier uniform because of the dichotomy of, of mail carriers, the postal service, and, and, and dogs, especially German shepherds. Well, wait, and you, I, right. speak, you, you, I speak in German. You just started well. talking about the feet and, like, moved right on from it, but that's that ain't right. Like, you think you can just, like, bring up feet and then just move on and quit? Like... Well, that's not. I mean, yeah. I mean, as a as a as a furry, my fetish isn't feet; it's the fur at right. this point. So, so you haven't got like you haven't really worn in your your shoes for your boots for that's a long for, time. I let others worship my boots. Right. Uh, you know, if a squirrel or a dragon or um, you know, uh, what was uh, Doctor Ryan? An otter. Yeah, if an otter wants to worship at my feet, my giant, enormous feet, uh, then so be it. Uh -huh. So, wait, let me understand this. You're a German shepherd postal worker with big feet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And hands, too. And hands, and big too. Hands, oh, and big hands. That digits. have gloves. Uh, yeah. yeah, I wear fingerless leather gloves. Oh, they're fingerless now, because you said they were like Mickey hands, where it was like a big white glove. Well, no, but like that shape, but like German shepherd oh, color. I, yeah. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Get, get with the fucking Duh. program, Ryan. Are you like really Jesus authoritarian, Christ. or are you like the really, are you like Mr. Hooper? The really I'm nice, the, like, um... No, like, I'm the uber uh, canine. I'm like, I think I'm in charge. Right. You're, right. you're all about profic German proficiency when you're delivering the mail. And I speak in a harsh German accent too the whole time, so it's it's like scary when I show up to a convention center. Okay. Do you have do you have a do you have a like a a, a, a bag with parcels and, and packages and letters in it? Um, no, no, no. Okay. That's so you're not you're not on duty when you're when you're in your persona. No, I'm at a con. I'm there to oh. yiff. What do you What do you do at cons? Pass out fucking uh, back rubs? Come on, I'm no, not here I, to work. I mean, I eat nachos off my chest in front of famous See, celebrities. So, so don't fucking kink shame me. I come. I'm not kink shaming. Shame. I was just asking. Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling, he, feeling very threatened. He might also be, I, he might also be pregnant, but you don't. He's he might be too shy to even like talk about that. I get a little upset and I start. Garrett. <laughs> Carrot, it's fine. Carrot! 
Garrett, calm down. He didn't. He didn't mean it. He doesn't always understand what he's talking about. Garrett, I love you, my friend. It's can okay. I, can I just formally apologize for you? My, just you just talk uh, out of turn sometimes, comment. Ryan, and you just need to learn when to like. You, you know, okay. enough is enough. Garrett, I want to. Belly. That's Garrett, not. I'm gonna come up to you. I'm gonna pet your belly. I'm gonna look you in the eyes and I say, I formally apologize. It was not my intent, and I am sorry. You are a good boy. I don't know. This is becoming an ASMR episode. God. I can, I can hear it in my ear. <laughs> so fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> if you guys are all listening to this on headphones, I'm so sorry. This is so gross. Oh, I'll take my headphones off. <laughs> This is a gaming cult podcast, episode 56. My friends, it's been a while. Why don't we do album recommendations? Ooh. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Let me see if I have an album, because I didn't think yeah. about getting one ready. What's the last thing I fucking listened to? I gotta that, that's that's basically, yeah, honestly, let's just do that. Last yeah. thing I listened to was uh, Don't Break the Oath by Merciful Fate. Oh, shit. Uh... I've been getting into Merciful Fate. I listened to that and Melissa, and then King Diamond's Abigail. Uh, only a little bit, but I've been really digging King Diamond. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Merciful Fate. Those first two albums are like absolutely stellar. Hell yeah. If you like metal or thrash or it's like, shit that fucking rocks. It's first wave listen, black metal, that is, yeah. It's like, you know, it, I was talking uh, to my roommate Andrew about it, and, and like, I told him what I don't like about a lot of newer metal, um, and I'm not talking about new metal specifically, but a lot of metal in general. Like it, it started to lose me with stuff like Cradle of Filth and all like Demoborger and all that like really heavy black metal, mm. because I felt like a lot of it or a, a lot of the stuff that doesn't stand out doesn't really have a melody. It's just people playing their instruments fast and well, which I don't. Again, like like I said earlier about like less I can feeling, appreciate. more technicality, yeah. Yeah, we, we, and that's why I don't like Japanese metal either. Like, it's so technical. There's no like, there's no like soul or like you said maybe emotion to it. Oh, there, so yeah, like, there's definitely a few primitive like yeah. Japanese metal bands out there. But yeah, a lot of technical stuff. Yeah, and, and I want to correct myself. Not say there's no emotion to it because I feel like m music as an expression always has some emotion, even if it is very technical. Um, but. Yeah, there's just like there's no melody or it doesn't rock. It doesn't like it doesn't have something that makes it like not catchy, but it, I, I think a melody is the best way to put it. Like when I listen to Merciful Fate, the, the bass lines are really like diverse and they're all over the place and they're kind of like rocking out. Whereas newer metal that I've been listening to or, or I've heard is all just the same two, you know, really fast um, beats. I guess rhythm is what I'm talking about. And that's. It has a lot of rhythm in Merciful Fate, and it's really cool. I like that. Uh, check it out if you guys are looking to, to get into some like very interesting and really, uh, really cool themes with great lyrics. That's the other part. Like all parts of it are great. The lyrics in the in those albums are like incredible. Well, this is so, the shit. Yeah. yeah. So that that's my recommendation. Is uh, I'll say "Don't Break the Oath" by Merciful Fate. Is the uh, Melissa that song that goes Melissa? She was a witch. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I think I, I, that is a good. Well, I, yeah, I probably didn't do. Al there's but... Alison Hell off that EP as well. Like Alison Hell is always the one I remember. Yeah, I really like. Um, I mean, I really I like them all, but I think off of uh, off of Merciful Fate, if I had to, uh, or off of I'm sorry, um, Don't Break the Oath, if I had to pick one, uh, I really like Desecration of Souls or Come to the Sabbath. If I had to, if I had to pick one, it would probably be Desecration of Souls. Just to pick one. I think that song fuck kicks ass. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would recommend Discovery by Daft Punk. <laughs> oh, you fucking stole mine. Okay, well... Really? Uh, I did the no, bit. No, I'm kidding. I did the bit, kidding. and now we can move on. I would recommend... I listened... I had one... I had a first listen to Arca's new album. I, I really like that um, album a lot. Arca is Arca is Arca that's all I'll say like Arca is completely in their own thing and 
yeah, that music is incredible. Uh, check check out Arca. Uh, new self-titled album. Uh, Leonce uh, from uh, the Fade to Mind crew just put out a new record, uh, a new EP that's really good. Uh, Leonce, he's put out a couple of EPs on Fade to Mind recently and like a, a really nice, and before that a really nice like EP of like Norlin's Bounce edits of like some really nice R&B and Beyonce tracks and stuff. Um, yeah, so check out Leonce's music is great. Um, and shit, I don't know, go get my album. How about that? Yeah. There you go. That's a good recommendation. Garrett, do you... Yo, I'm here. You listen to that music from time to time. I like, I like that music, but you know, my, my thing is always having trouble getting into new music, and, uh, I haven't bought or checked out anything new recently but what i want to talk about is um this group data discs that's putting out these video game soundtracks on uh, vinyl yeah. oh fuck yeah um i've been i guess i have been buying some stuff recently because yeah i i got to, i think my most recent one i picked up was the uh castlevania 2 and it's got the nes and then the famicom version on side uh, you know, side A's, NES version, oh, side two's the, the Famicom version. I didn't realize it's the same, out. you know, yeah, crazy how, like, there's those same tracks, but they went through and, and like, here's the different version. Like, it actually sounded very different on the two systems. I've actually got um, the, I've got the original uh, Japanese CD version of that, like, that came out back in, like, 90, the early 90s, wow. or late 80s even, on, like, it was called the Konami Club, and it was, like, a mail-order only record label. Oh Konami. shit, that's crazy! I, I bought it while I was like r- CD shopping in, in Osaka. Like I found the original press because there's been a couple of pressings of it, but I found the original like Konami Club mail order version of it. And yeah, it's like it's all the Famicom versions with and like the last of like the first three games, and then like the last like handful of tracks are like the American NES versions, which are like have like one or two less channels than the Famicom, like sound wise. Yeah. It's it's interesting that the two differences. Um, yeah, I picked up that one. Uh, they've also done uh, Shinobi. They've done a bunch of the castle, the first uh, Castlevania, and I think they've done the third one at this point. It's, the artwork is beautiful, especially on that third Castlevania one. Um, but yeah, check out Data Discs uh, for these old game soundtracks. And they just tweeted out something I saw today that was a teaser for. Uh, an altered beast soundtrack. Yeah, they like they like sure, they were yeah. playing a test pressing of it. That was sick. Fucking dude, I, and uh, there's so much uh, music from that game that I would like totally uh, want to get on uh, vinyl. So I, I think I'll be picking that one up too. I still want to get the Golden Axe one that they put out. That was sick. yeah. But like Shen- they got a lot of them. Shenmue, like Streets of Rage one and two, like yeah. It's- so many like all of the Yu Suzuki games like they've done soundtracks for they did pretty Outrun. much that's a great fucking soundtrack yeah, yeah. I have the Outrun uh, the Outrun one as well oh, that's really nice. good I don't have that I don't have that all super hang on I wanted to get both of those shit I got that at PAX when our friend Jared Thorbon did a panel and he did a raffle and he raffled it off and I didn't win it but the guy next to me did and he didn't know what it was so I gave him 20 bucks and he gave me that record so. <laughs> oh yeah nice always be there with the cash baby yeah, I was just like, I'll give you 20 bucks, and he just went, okay. And other people around me, I think, were trying to scramble to get their wallets out, and it was like, too fucking late. <laughs> yeah, that's when you run. I love those releases. Uh, oh, yeah. That's Ra- mine. Thank you, Gary, my friend. Uh, Rai Rai, what is your... Uh, I have two albums I'd what, like to what, what is, what's, what's, what, what is What does the doctor prescribe? <laughs> I prescribe... Uh, <laughs> Uh, two quick albums I'd like to talk about. Uh, the first one is from a band called Hyper Crush. It's called Vertigo. And uh, the other one is by Nervo, and it's called Collateral. They're both kind of the same, uh, kind of like, sort of like, uh, I think, what is it called? Electropop. It's, you know, a lot oh, of really? electronic music with people. That sound like, like, they sound like post hardcore or something, or like something industrial. No, Nervo is two uh, uh, ladies, and they sing. And one of my favorite songs on the album called "Hey Ricky" is uh, also featuring uh, like Krayshawn and Dev. Oh so wow! Right, right. Krayshawn's back. Not, yeah, Krayshawn's back. Krayshawn's uh, been well, like. Well, I mean, she's not back. This album is from 2015, so she was oh. back, and then 
I don't know what the fuck she's doing now. Craig Sean's actually oh, really been really into footwork. She's been like DJing at some footwork nights in in Los Angeles, like at Rocksteady no, and shit. Sean. Yeah, shouts hey, out. Whatever to, happened to that? Red shouts Red out Pepper's to the Duke Benz work crew over there. She directed. <laughs> I said, whatever happened out, to Brian. that RHCP video that she directed? It, it never it came out. out, and they got a different director to do Why? it instead. What, what oh, happened? Really? I, I, the, they, I didn't hear anything other than uh, it didn't come out, and they hired a different director to put the version that came out, uh, you know, the one that actually came out. Go ahead. I just want to quickly say, shuts out White Girl Mav, uh, Free V Nasty. I'm saying Free V Nasty until my throat is raspy. Yeah, Free V Nasty. Young, young, rich, and flashy. I'd be where the cash be. <laughs> there you go. Shuts out. I, to this day, almost once a week, will still listen to Gucci Gucci, because that's a great song. Dude, it was a good song. <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite songs of all time. Oh, God. So, yeah, if you are if if you like that kind of music, check out Nervo and check out Hypercrash. There you go. Good recommendations. Thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Thank uh, you. You thank, know what? Hey. Thank you, Brian, hey, too. Thank you, my Brian, wife. also. Thank you. My wife. My wife. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 Got him. <laughs> you know, I what? like uh, I like it to sex. Oh. Make a sex attack. Oh, nice. My wife. It's... Make a make a sexy explosion. My wife <laughs> is she is dead. <laughs> <laughs> why? 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 Sorry. I'm happy. Why, did... <laughs> why didn't the Bruno uh, uh, voice take off like the Borat voice? I thought Bruno, Bruno was... was considerably less likable. I really liked Bruno. I liked Bruno. No, I too. agree. <laughs> I agree. As a, as a movie character or as a character and as a movie, I thought it was way better than yeah. Borat. But the character was not supposed to be likable. He was supposed to be a piece of shit. Yeah. So no, nobody got behind him like they like Borat had this kind of like cute Innocence. ignorance. To yeah, him. ignorance. Yeah, Bruno sat on it. Mexicans. Yeah, well, I mean, you can't really sit there and say like they that Bruno has a nice. You're talking about uh, Bruno is a is like a cultural douchebag versus a fucking anti-Semitic racist uh, rapist. They they all have kind of their their downsides. Oh yeah, absolutely. They all have their yeah. Which is <laughs> why Ali G is actually my favorite. Yeah, he was he, ultimately he was my favorite, but yeah. Ah, uh, I wish he would have gotten a really good movie too. Have you ever seen the Ali G movie? It's not great. No, it's not. Good yeah. Enough. Oh, it was it's great when great. it came. It was great when it came out for like a UK movie, like for its really, t- oh, like yeah, very much, very much for its time, like. Yeah, yeah. Charles dances like in a, doesn't he like wear a dress or something? The movie just doesn't age well. That's all. But like for mm, for yeah. when it came out, right at the turn of the millennium or whatever, early, very early two thousands, like for the UK, that was that was a good movie. Like, you know. The way I saw that movie was using uh, uh, Morpheus or Kazaa to try to download a different movie. Wow. And that's probably why oh, yeah. I like it, because I, I opened the file and started watching it, and it starts with like him walking out, and then they shoot him up against a brick wall, and his dick falls out of his pants because they shoot a hole in his pants. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, like, I didn't know, at, you know... I've never seen this character before. It's before even the Madonna video over here, uh, and before the LG show. I'm like so confused and un, you know, like just don't. I have no idea what this movie is or what this guy is. I thought I was gonna get like signs, like what the fuck is this? Yeah, so we already had like the original the LG show on like Channel Four or whatever it was in the UK, with like a couple of videos that had come out, like LG's eye and LG's in it as well. Uh, yeah. like a couple of like original VHS like volumes of the original UK show so we had that we were he was already like a cultural like comedy icon like in the UK before before the movie came out so yeah we, we definitely had the preamble for that but yeah and, and, Br- the, and my favorite and thing I- my favorite thing about Bruno was him just interviewing like fashion designers yeah, <laughs> and getting them to say like completely contrasting things in the same sentence, like yeah, Absolutely. it's so it's so heavy, but it's so light. Yeah, I like <laughs> uh, I like one of the after one of the interviews, he asks him, um, he was like, uh, "Do you feel consistency is important?" And and the guy goes, "Absolutely," and it was like the perfect way to end. Like an, the guy had had said <laughs> literally every. Everything that he had interviewed with that guy, all all of it was 
an opposite. Yeah, every line on every the- line was fed to him. <laughs> Every oh. every line was fed to him, and he and he repeated that, and then later it would be that same line, but the a- absolute opposite, and the guy would just say exactly exactly that. It was <laughs> it was like not even like oh just a couple. Every, it was like five different things. It was great. That's right. It's so heavy, but it's so light. Yeah, I think my f- that's that's so funny. My favorite Bruno bit, like between the mo- even the movie and everything, is still on the TV show when he was on the beach. Talking to yes. the like all the guys, Volleyball like players, yeah, yeah. I, 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 take your take your shirt off. Yeah, are you having fun? Yeah. All right, say uh, thanks for watching Gay TV. Thanks for <laughs> wait what? Gay Spring Break. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is for Gay so TV. What the fuck? Upset. Yeah, he takes like the wind. I always love that he took the wind cover off the microphone and like wouldn't let it go. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he doesn't let go of it and the microphone's nowhere near him. He just he grabs the microphone and like and takes and gets the wind cover but the microphone slips out and then just doesn't let go of it. I love it. <laughs> the, and the, the best part is how like how beforehand they were being so, you know, complicit with everything he was doing. Oh and god, then, yeah. And then, and then to just have that framework of it being Austria Dude, gay TV. He gets them to pants. He like he gets them to pull their pants down and like show their asses all. <laughs> yeah. And they're all like, slapping each other's asses. Oh, it's so good. Dude, it's just just a, just a just a bit of just a bit of healthy bro culture. Yeah, yeah like growing out with my bros. Up, bro? <laughs> and that's why Sup, I bro? love the character of Bruno so much more than uh, than all of his others as as like um. As like the the out in the world interaction character, because he would like he would work into those bits like some sort of like joke that's very specific to to an aspect of society, you know, like like what Jake said earlier with getting the guy to contradict himself in in the conversation, and like I, I was just thinking yesterday about when he was like talking to those to those girls who owned owned an ad agency, and he was like, yeah, what's the next Dar four? I need Dar five. And they're like so ready to go along with him. Like he got, he got really smart with that character. He always had like a, more of a point with it, and I and I felt like it was more subtle. And uh, and that's why I appreciated it more. And and love man, those that that movie I still think is one of his best, uh, or, or one of the best movies of that time period of doing those kinds of like uh, low budget, um, is it real? Is it fake movies? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my my favorite. Sasha Baron Cohen moment for any of his characters is is a Borat moment from like the UK show. I think it showed in like the Ali G US series as well when the Borat segments, uh, where he's at the English like bowls club at the lawn bowls club, and the guy is trying to get him to sh- show him how to use a urinal, and <laughs> Borat just keeps like trying to take a shit in a, in the yeah. urinal. It's like you can do a dirt in here. No, no, we don't do that. You you go you, you only do you only do any. He's like too like English and posh to say like piss or pee or like pee or anything yeah. it's like no no you stand here and you you're number one here oh you can lie down or you why not you can do it dirty no you can't it's just not allowed but why but why not <laughs> and that's that's one of the only moments like when the guy turns his back to like to Borat for a second that's the uh, one of the only moments in any Sasha Baron Cohen thing where you see him like almost start laughing and breaking character as well like you yeah. see him you see Borat smirk because he's about to lose it and that's the only time that ever happens yeah pretty much because that was that's what made that character so believable um was that like he really put everything into making it like a full-on character um, like, you know, coming up with words that aren't inappropriate, but like, you know, I, I can make a dirt, like, oh, yeah. this guy doesn't understand English, but he understands like, shit is like dirty, or, you know, it's like, people shit in the ground, oh, I, I'll call it dirt, like, he made those characters so 100% plausible that yeah. they feel like different people, it, it was really a, did. It was a really interesting dynamic of... Him probably being a bit xenophobic against like Kazakhstani people, but at the same time like really playing into everybody else's like xenophobia and cultural unawareness oh, yeah. of like people yeah. who just aren't from their same background and like and just playing off that insecurity like hundred percent is is a really interesting yeah. dynamic. Yeah, I I'm really excited to see what 
what he's been working on because hasn't he been working on like a movie or some some new thing for the past year or so well he did that spy movie didn't he uh which i haven't checked the out. brothers grimsby yeah did you see that i heard no but i heard some people say it was okay okay because i didn't like the dictator was okay but i felt it was just like a couple I like, like the dictator it was all right it was like two hours of arab jokes but like yeah um I've missed his last two. I mean, it, it's kind of like the lightning in the bottle is gone for him to be able to covertly be one of those characters again, you know? But apparently that's what he's been working on, but it's supposed to be like, you wouldn't... You might have already met him and not even known. that That's what it's they like were saying about, like... Crazy the, prosthetics? Probably, or something like that. Uh, wow. I'm not... I'm not sure, but that's that's what I've heard. I have no real evidence. I was hoping one of you guys actually knew something, but <laughs> no. Whoops. The rumor mill uh, on GCP. Uh, I, I don't know. All I've heard is that him and Will Ferrell are going to be making a funny uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes movie next year. Oh, that'd yeah. be cool. I mean, they were good in Tales of Nights. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I like I Sherlock Holmes. Great. So, shuts up. Well, that, that, that should about call it, I reckon, for episode yeah. 56 of the Gaming Cult Podcast. What do you reckon, boys? Good. It's I think good. we did it. We had everybody... Good about this. We gotta, yeah. give a, we gotta give a good shout out to our sweet boy, Eric. Uh, shouts out. Our, our sweet boy, Martin, from Sweden. Shouts out. Shouts out. Sh- shouts out. Shouts out. And I, wait, I didn't get to say shouts out for Eric, and I don't want him to think I didn't mean to, so shouts out, Eric. Thing, well, uh, let me count you that. down from seven before you give that shout. All right. Oh yeah, sure. I, I, I Here we prom- go. I promise you, he will never listen to this and does not. Get oh, it. absolutely. But I need to no. do it anyway, just so you can <laughs> sleep at night. All right, okay. here you go. Yeah, so that I don't stay up at night and I don't wake up at two o'clock in the morning saying I didn't shout out Eric on GCP. You're now awake. I think he hates me. In the morning, I see and you then, on the SN. Well, I mean, none of us have shouted out Ruby right now, and she was on this episode. So, what do you say about oh, that? God. She okay. Well, shouts out Ruby. Shouts out. I, well, I said Ruby. I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Uh, write to us, uh, gamingcultpodcast at gmail.com. We'll see you next time, guys and girls. Bye-bye. Somebody draw that picture. We need all the personas. Thank you. It's gamingcult.org. Listen to Brian's Lost Podcast. Yes. God damn it. Brian, quick. It's the outro. Where can we find that? Okay, hey, uh, everyone, if you guys like uh, Lost and you want to watch it again and get sort of the same experience that you had when you watched it the first time, uh, check out my podcast. It's called We Go Back Podcast. It's on SoundCloud. It's on iTunes. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I do two episodes per week. It's been going about 12 weeks now. Check it out, and I'd be happy to hear what you guys have to say about it. And thanks for uh, for always listening to the Game Cult Podcast, too. Shuts out. Subscribe to Shuts us on YouTube. YouTube. We still put out exclusive videos on YouTube, like from time to time. So oh, nice! Check out the Gaming Cult YouTube. Watch the poorly played stream every Wednesday on Mega Sixty Four TV. That's right. Good job. Good Mega, job, Brian. The Mega Sixty Four Archive uh, channel as well. I don't have anything to plug, so I'm just plugging everything for you guys because I don't do anything. Hey, uh, if you archive. live anywhere within Southern Oregon and need a chiropractor, uh, John, <laughs> the offices of Doctor Ryan Reed. Five times we help with all car accidents, family practice. Please don't call me. I you just realized up. I gave out my Why fucking phone number. What, the fuck <laughs> you oh, what is wrong with you? I was thinking. Thankfully, like, this isn't doing? live. Maybe. Yeah. No, this isn't live. You I'll, know what? I'll, hey, I'll leave beep, this in, but just I'll, bleep it. I'll beep it out. I'll do something funny with yeah, it. Just yeah. Just maybe don't give everyone my phone number. Yeah. Anyway, if you live anywhere near Medford, Oregon, l- 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 come. I'll give you a, a good adjustment. No, I wouldn't say that because that's unprofessional. He gives a a full service. No, that's not funny.